Hi hey guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 479, featuring a look at the game, Celasta Crown of the Magister. Now, if you want a quick and dirty review of this game, let me just say, if you like the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons uh, rule set, if you like Temple of Elemental Evil, XCOM, uh, turn-based role-playing games with a deep emphasis on tactical combat, uh, as well as long-term str uh, strategies in the form of, of course, leveling up your characters and getting better items and so on and so forth. Uh, you're absolutely going to love this game. You should definitely just go pick it up now. Uh, there are some caveats in there uh, we'll get to in the video. Uh, it doesn't have any rats in it. Okay, that... <laughs> well, that, that sucks. Hopefully they will rectify that grievous error. Uh, also, if you watch this whole video, I'll have a disaster at the end uh, that somewhat taints my uh, enthusiasm for this game, but just by a little. And I don't even blame the developers. Uh, by the way, <laughs> those are tactical adventurers, or tactical adventures, and they're based in France. I'm actually hoping to have them on the show soon uh, to interview them and get into uh, some of the development and design of this game. So maybe that will come up again. Uh, but anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado... Here is Celasta, Crown of the Magister. All right, folks. <laughs> Ooh, uh, this is a good one. All right, this is a uh, this is a good one. I am just uh, <laughs> kind of head over heels for for this game, and it really just scratches every possible itch. It's kind of like I have lain in a bed of ants for a couple of nights and just been, you know, totally covered. Uh, and with ant bites, and then woke up the next day just scratching and feeling amazing. <laughs> uh, that's the last. It's like a big bed of of ant bites. Uh, okay, a little bit facetious here, but let me just <laughs> tell you what I like about this game. Uh, if you like, uh, you know, I don't even know if this is an if question for you guys, uh, uh, guys and gals, but the uh, XCOM series, especially those later games with that really nice tactical. Uh, precision, the combat, or a Temple of Elemental Evil that I played last time, you know, it's got the same uh, sort of vibe to it, where you're really thinking about every round, uh, it really kind of uh, rewards very careful planning, uh, strategic planning, as well as the tactics on the ground, so you're thinking about levels, you're thinking about how to use abilities, uh, you're even thinking about when's the best time to use potions, and you know, just all that wonderful stuff uh, that makes a uh, you know, a good game like this work. Uh, so yeah, it combines that, but with the... Let's see, let me get this right. Uh, so it... Yeah, here we go. I was, I was kind of confused by this. Maybe this is something I could talk about. I'm going to have the developer on. Uh, Tactical Adventures on in a couple of weeks, hopefully, and we can uh, clear some of this up. But according to Wikipedia, uh, this game... It uses something called the System Reference Document, SRD. Let's see what that says there. A reference for a role-playing game mechanics license under the Open Gaming License to allow other publishers to make material compatible with that game. Okay, so I'm not really, I don't even know, this is kind of new to me, because I thought it was just the 5th edition rules. So I guess you got this... The 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons rules out there that you might be playing on Fantasy Grounds or something. And this, I guess, is a variant of that. Let me just open this up and see if it gives us any more info. Allow other publishers. I guess there's a bit of history here. Here we go. The 5th edition of D&D was released in 2014. A new OGL licensed SRD based on 5th edition was released in January 2016. And updated to version 5.1. Okay, so I guess they kind of got this official thing that you're not allowed to use without getting licensing through uh, Wizards of the Coast. But then there's this other thing that's kind of a... Uh, yeah, I guess public domain is not the right word. But just, I guess, it's open so that people can use it. They probably have to acknowledge it. 
anyway, I'm not a lawyer, folks. I, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. But it, I thought it was based on the... Let me just put it this way. It's it's very close. Matter of fact, I don't know what, what's different about it. I'm not an expert on this. But it, it plays to me very much like a uh, the tabletop uh, role-playing, the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. You know, I've been playing some campaigns with that. Uh, they got all the same sort of features, all the changes from the uh, 3.5 or the Pathfinder game. If you move from this back and forth between this and Pathfinder, I think you're really fine. Those uh, differences really stand out to you. And to, to me, I just think they, they nail it exactly. You know, there's a lot of stuff actually about 5th edition that, you know, I've always kind of been confused. Like, how does this work? It's never, not really spelled out too well in the manuals. Uh, you know, of course, they had to make those calls in a computer game because you can't just have a dungeon master arbitrarily you know, stepping in to <laughs> say, well, the rule, rules apply this way. <laughs> no, you have to have code. Uh, you have to have a, a final decision made. Uh, so a lot of the stuff I think they, I could tell, and again, this is something I'll get into with the developers. I'm very curious, you know, where those points were where they had to decide. Uh, but it plays really, really nicely. Now, this world <coughs> of uh, Celasta... Celasta, Celasta. It's an original. Somewhere I read that this is a uh, a brand new world. It's not based on an existing campaign like Temple of Elemental Evil. It's it's their own thing, and it's it's fairly well developed. You know, again, I don't. You know me. I'm not a guy that gets all into the stories of of these games. You know, just give me <laughs> something about a dragon or a wizard and an orb. I'm cool. Uh, other people get obsessive about that stuff. They they expect every damn game to be like Game of Thrones uh, or something. I don't know where they, where they get off on that. Read a damn novel. <laughs> you know, we're, we're here to play games, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, they created their own world for this. It seems pretty uh, pretty cool to me, having uh, fun with it. I was going to mention where you could buy this. Yeah, here it is on uh, GOG. Oh, look. If you watch this video right now, I guess you get 50% off. That's amazing. Wow, 20 bucks? So you get this for 20 bucks. They got a something they're calling a supporter edition. Ooh. Something special dice. Dice with special effects. <laughs> I should have gotten that one instead of the lame old standard edition. Uh, anyway, you don't know if you want to... This is the problem, right? You don't know if you want the super premium, deluxe, super mega rat boy version of something uh, that you haven't played because you don't know if it, it might suck. And then you're stuck with like a big giant thing. Um, but anyway, I think if you're watching this, if you, it, trust me, you probably want to get the uh, whatever that super rat boy version is. Oh, look at this. The Primal Calling DLC out now. So I'm pretty sure I did get that. Crown of the Magister special promotion. Uh, so how do you get this? Is this uh, what's the deal with this DLC? Includes uh, let's see, two new classes: the Barbarian class, Druid class, Half Orc, Ancestry, the Wanderer background. Uh, so they really created a lot of new stuff. Looks like you would definitely want this. Primal Calling, and I think, I guess it just comes with, no, it's, uh, so it's eight bucks if you already got the original game, or you can get, this is on Steam now, looks like you've got Celasta, Supporter Pack, Primal Calling, all of that for $34. Let's just flip and see what, so does the GOG version have that? Primal Calling. That's the question, isn't it? Now well, let's see. You can, so you can buy it separately for eight bucks. So I don't know if you can. Uh, I guess it's probably about the same price, no matter which way you go there. Uh, but anyway, I just like to support GOG because uh, you know once you get that game downloaded, you don't have to worry about them just deciding one day, hey, we don't want to support this anymore. <laughs> Too bad. Okay, anyway, we've got a lot to get into here. I'm, I'm really excited about this. So I'm going to just jump into the game. Go, go pick it up. If you don't want any spoilers, uh, just go pick it up, play it. 
it's definitely worth it. You're going to love it. <laughs> uh, but if you actually want to watch me play it, uh, hang around. We'll get it going here in just one second. Look at this beautiful title screen. <laughs> oh, wait. Don't go away. Come back. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was less impressive than the original <laughs> artwork they had. Look, it's a cool, uh, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. You want to go to mysterious places. I always wonder who's lighting all the torches and crap. Okay, so I got a game that I thought I'd break this down this way. Holy hell, what is that? Dungeon make, dungeon maker. Select dungeons and locations created by the community to edit or play or create your own. Okay, I don't know why I just now noticed that. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, should I make a dungeon? Would you guys play a dungeon that I created for this? Like a rat, a rat maze. <laughs> dungeon of the Rat King or something. Oh my god, you know, I might have to do... I wonder if I get these guys to help me out. That'd be totally awesome. I said there's a community. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm getting off track here. I'm just uh, too much caffeine. I don't know what to do with this with me today. Uh, anyway, I got a version of the game with some other characters I played up to about level 5 and I thought at some point uh, you know we'll play through a little bit of the preliminaries here create some characters but I think uh, like a lot of these games uh, it gets more interesting as you go along you get more bells and whistles to play with and so we'll play the beginning segments and then uh, jump into that level 5 uh, party and you can see what what it looks like a little bit further down the road I think it's a good way to go there Okay, well, let's get some characters created. Do a new adventure. Let's see. We'll change. Click to open a selection of adventures. Ah. I guess I got a couple different adventures you could play. Let's do the... Uh, that might be kind of interesting to try one of these different ones. Yeah, I'll just stick to the plan, Matt. <laughs> stick to the plan! <laughs> okay, select. Iron Man mode. Skip intro. Authentic mode. For players who want the authentic tabletop rule set. Got a couple different modes to play. Let's just stick with this. <clears throat> you know, there's always some things you hate about the official rules. I have never understood... For example, that that crappy crap crap about when you're when you're trying to describe a book or scribe a scroll into your spell book and there's this chance of failure. <laughs> so like you take an hour and you you might lose the scroll that you work so hard to buy or find. I hate that rule. I never liked that, so I could usually just turn that off. I don't see how that makes it more fun. You know, sometimes you could miss out and just never be able to cast that spell ever. Okay, I need to get my handy-dandy uh, Patreon page up here so I can see who is going to be in our party. I'll just pause this so you don't have to wait. Okay, let's, let's do this. Select a character from the character pool. Yeah, these characters are just swimming around in the pool. Hey, get out of that pool. It's time to play. All right, so you could be super lame and, and grab one of these pre-made, pre-generated characters. I Sometimes, you know, you can look at those and get some ideas about what the developers might recommend. Uh, I think half the fun is creating your own. And I will make sure, guys, this time, I know some people were really disappointed with my Temple of Elemental Evil that I didn't go through all the characters. You, want to, you can't make everybody happy, right? It's like, you know, every time I create a whole party, I get all these comments about, eh, you know, you took an hour just to get into the game. And other people are like, you took an hour <laughs> before you got to the game. It was awesome. <laughs> so, like, I'm just going to have, I'm, I'm going to do what I like. Uh, that seems to work. Okay, we got our races here. Ooh, the high elf. They are known to smoke a lot of pot. Or I guess uh, pipe weed or something. What do they smoke in this in Celasta? I don't. Know. <laughs> Remember those got was it the Gothic series where you're always smoking like the that weird green weed? 
Yeah, that was uh, that's probably why people like gothic. All right, I guess these are pretty standard, uh, pretty standard D and D style. Ooh, a snow dwarf. And yeah, my other party has a snow dwarf. I think being from Minnesota, I'd probably be a snow. I feel like I'd be a snow halfling. <laughs> Island halfling. Oh, these are like pirates. Ah. Okay, let's see who I want to make here. We want to make a. Let's see. We got a Billy. We got a Frong. A Match. Sin Justin. Who's somebody I haven't picked before? I need a way to like randomize this. How can I randomize the persons? Uh, maybe we could go this way. Like, who's the? Did we do Spence last time. Garen's been on there. Uh, um, yeah. Let me. I'll just randomly pick people. Okay. First though, we have to pick a a race. Not, you know, with D and D, um, it's not like. You know, they, they tried to sort of gravitate towards that really rigid tank, healer, rogue, uh, uh, blaster caster, or whatever they call that. Sort of like, wow. Uh, but you don't have to play it that way. You know, one of the things I like about this system is you, you could just pick a, a weird party. You know, you could just have all clerics or all wizards, and, you know, there's ways to make that work. Uh, which I always thought was, was cool. You, know, you don't have to have a, a dedicated tank unless you like that style. Uh, I tend to be okay with it, but you know we could just shake things up a little bit, be a little, have a little fun. You know, people might think about a half orc because he's real tough. Uh, you know, like a half orc barbarian, you know, kind of a the stereotypical <laughs> easy mode pick. <laughs> Let's see what. Oh, this is uh, one that's been. Uh, this must be one of the new options. Then you got the humans. They get plus one to all ability scores and the six... You know, the movement's actually a bigger deal in this game than you might think. <clears throat> so that might actually be a pretty decisive, uh, you know, bigger factor than, like, these... Uh, looks like the halflings and the dwarves get a little movement restricted. So that might, you know, be more of a factor than you would you would think, but... Oh, let's just do something different. I, I picked a, a snow dwarf... You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a halfling fighter. Let's see, how do we do a male? Or maybe a paladin. <laughs> is that the male? <laughs> oh, I guess it is. Wee! You spin me right round, baby, right round like a wreck, baby. What do they get? Dex plus two, so that'll come in handy. Saving throw against charm. Yeah, you don't want your tank getting charmed or falling asleep. <coughs> Smart. Keen senses. So this probably would be better for a... Uh, you know, it, it's probably leaning towards uh, a roguish or maybe a wizard. But we're going to go... Ooh, a barbarian. Very curious about barbarians. I play barbarian in my uh, tabletop campaigns. You know, I was thinking about maybe a ranger. Let's see, strength and dex. You are trained to fight. You were trained to craft basic ammunition, so they want you to uh, animal handling, athletics, perception, class equipment, scale mail. So they would have a little bit of armor. Now usually when I think about tanks, I think about paladins. Or maybe just straight on fighters. I think a lot of people don't like just the... They think fighters are kind of a boring class. You're actually not. you got lots of fun, fun options within that class. But I'll just pick something new since I already have my other class. Other party I can show you with some of these other options. <clears throat> oh, let's just go pally. So we're going to get some skills, Divine Sense, Reveal Celestials, Fiends, and Undead. There are some Undeads, so that could come in handy. A Pool of Healing Power. Spend points from your Healing Pool to restore lost HP. You know, like the Fighter has something sort of similar to that. 
it's only good for, for them, but um, hopefully they're the ones taking the most of the hits. Spend five points from your healing pool to cure one disease. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You can edit the equipment. <clears throat> oh, I didn't see this option before. Okay. So you get to pick. Uh, I'm not sure what difference that makes. Oh, food is a big deal in this game. So isn't the... I think an elf is like really good with a sword, right? I don't know why I'd want to change it. I guess they're all proficient in these items. <clears throat> I guess the big choice is do you want a shield or not? Eh, rapier. Eh. Eh. <laughs> Let's just go with this. That's That looks good. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm guessing these are all new, new to the thing. New to Celeste. I don't recognize these names. Let's see, we got neutral, lawful good, neutral good, lawful neutral. This one's lawful good. Einar, the god of valor and fidelity and the patron of paladins. Okay, that's probably what we want. <clears throat> Anything good? I don't see where you get any... This might just be for flavor. I don't see any uh, like effect that's going to have on me. The background. Academics, acolytes. I'm actually, are these the same as uh, the D and D ones? I, I, I don't think so. They seem like they might also be. <clears throat> maybe they're loosely based on that, but it looks like they have at least tweaked them. So this is just, you know, this kind of gives you some flavor for your character, but it also. I think what's it doing there so it's giving it's giving me different <clears throat> proficiencies some different equipment some background personality flags I could choose from so let's just look at this wonder is a new one you were born in the marches in a small outpost built during the principality's attempt to colonize this region you were raised and trained to survive the harsh and perilous environment. You had few friends, <coughs> no school, and became a loner. Though you learned the true worth of friendship, the kind that keeps you alive. <laughs> yeah, it's like the kind of friendship I have with you guys. You, you keep the show alive. I'm a wanderer. They call me the wanderer. Oh, what's it want me to do? Background personality flags. Hey, look at my personality. I put it on a flag. <clears throat> I hate caution. Pragmatism. Yeah, kindness. It's... So we gotta pick another one. Oh no, we got some additional ones. Okay. Or do we have to choose these? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so I guess these are optional. So you like double up on kindness? I don't know what. It's kind of weird. Let's just go. I guess we had to pick two. We'll do pragmatism and kindness. No, I gotta pick two more. Okay. Uh, let's say lawful as a paladin. You think you'd be all about the uh, lawful authority? Blah blah blah. Okay, and here we can re-roll the dice or pick the standard. Array. Drag and drop your rolls into ability score cells or optimize them for your character class. Ooh. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And, you know, with this, along the way, you do get chances to raise your ability scores. So it's not that huge of a problem if you're not 100% happy with your rolls. That will give you a little something you can tweak, you know, along the way. However, I don't really like. <laughs> Let's see if we can do a little better than that. <laughs> Let's see if we can. This is how they get you, you know. You're like, oh no. I like at least 118. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. That way, yeah, yeah. 
And I believe the charisma is important for a paladin for some reason. It can represent a charming, a commanding personality, yes. <laughs> okay, let me get these other ones. Plus two from Ancestry. Not very smart. Hmm. Maybe that's just like skills. I would just go with that. <clears throat> he did say he didn't have much schooling. He's a dropout. Probably a millionaire. Choose two schools from athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, persuasion. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> and you recognize these if you play any 5th edition. So along the ways, you know, there'll be these checks and they're like, you know, roll to see if you can figure out what's going on with this dude. Is he lying to you? Is there something, a little something extra going on? Uh, medicine. And I think the idea, too, is you want to kind of spread these out amongst your party members. So, like, persuasion might not be a bad one. And I think all we really do here by selecting this is give you a little bit of a bonus. Your proficiency bonus, I believe, is added in. So I like to just pick ones that are already strong, and you can make them even stronger. Okay. i got to change that hair, man. <laughs> yeah, that's looking a little better. Yeah. I kind of like that. Okay, let's go with that. <clears throat> Scars. Different faces. I'm not going to get that uh, pronoun die no deal with it <laughs> shouldn't there be like a thousand of these <laughs> uh, additional backstory and put your backstory here once upon a time there was a guy with too much time on his hands <laughs> oh what's it wait no why can't I finish oh the name <clears throat> Yes, the name. So you can randomly do it. <laughs> Strong wind. Uh, let's put in... I'm trying to think of somebody I've definitely not put on before. Looking at my list of people here. Uh, done you already. It always gives me the same list. How about... <laughs> Somebody here named Omicron. <laughs> I wonder if they picked that before the whole, you know, virus or variant or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, there's a Peter. Let's do Peter. I'm pretty sure I haven't had Peter on into a party. <laughs> Pita with an I. So it's even more fantasy. All right. Hey, uh, Pita. Deus Vult. Got an achievement for that. So we got our pally. What else do we want? Some type of, uh, where's my halflings? <clears throat> the marsh halfling or the, oh, we got to do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my other party has one of these pirates too. I mean, if you got another, if you got pirate, do you need other options? Let's just go with this swamp halfling. Should have called him the swamp halfling. Looks pretty good. Good, great character models. Uh, what's the halfling? You know, you think rogue always, but uh, you know, I'm pretty sure with this game you can't like do a level of rogue and a level of sorcerer. Maybe you can. I just haven't figured that out yet. I don't ever do that anyway. Let's look at these rogue archetypes. I've always liked the rogues. They are pretty useful. Again, you can <coughs> still open locks and things with other classes. I just think he looks pretty badass, though. Like, oh, look at that. I like that black armor. The rapier looks pretty, pretty cool. Uh, what's our... Th you spent your youth in a company of mercenaries, and since then your fighting skills have been put to the service of gold. Companionship and bloodshed, I've forged your character and made you both tough and bitter. <laughs> oh, yes. 
You're as tough and bitter, you sell sword. So he's gonna be cynical. Very violent. Ah! I'm cynically violent. Ah! Uh, I don't like a. He's a rogue, man. I want him. Yeah, let's go with the cynicism. Eh. I don't know. Why are they repeated? <laughs> Evil. <laughs> you know, greed and violent. <laughs> He's definitely a r proper rat boy. All right, your available scores. 17, 14. Got some 12s. Oh, we do a little better than that. Da, 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 da. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. I want him to be dexterous. Ooh, 20! Uh, con. You know, I always like characters that can stay alive, you know? You know, I, I think with this version of the rules, you can, uh, like, a, I don't know if you necessarily benefit very much from having a high strength as a rogue or if it's just totally ignored. You know, some of these versions of the of the rules I've noticed, like the dexterity will help you hit, but you still need that strength to do your damage. I think they get did away with that, and now it's just the one roll for everything. Okay, I think you just use strength for various kinds of, uh, like you're trying to push a boulder or something. <clears throat> trying to lift weights. <laughs> All right, back to this again, and we're definitely going to want, I guess this is pre-selected. So he's got thieves, tools, I guess we could add, oh, what am I, oh. man, he is not going to be deceiving anybody, <laughs> ooh, his charisma is terrible, okay, I guess he's kind of swampy, he's like, uh, who's that swamp kid, Cindy, <laughs> Zindy, <laughs> Zindy the swamp boy, <laughs> so Zindy, Zindy the swamp halfling. Okay, what is sleight of hand? Planting something on someone else, concealing an object. Which one has to do with the... Uh... I guess we could make him a great acrobat. <coughs> <coughs> What's this thief's tools use? Sleight of hand have anything to do with the... Uh... Oh, look at this. Oh man, I'm glad I looked at that. So this tells you right up front, this is not even implemented. So you could pick that if you want to. You would be stupid if you did. Because it's not even used. But man, it's there for flavor. I don't care about... Oh, that one's not used either? At least not in this main campaign. So I guess maybe some of the later campaigns might use it. Well, geez, then. I gotta pick... I'm not gonna pick something I'm not even gonna use. I guess we could go with some of these other ones. Yeah, that might help. Yeah. <clears throat> sure. Oh, wait. Yeah, Thieves Tools. You definitely want that maxed the hell out. What else am I supposed to be picking here? I got another one to pick. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go stealth. I want this guy to be sneaky. Languages. It says that one's not used. I thought that was used. Uh, okay, let's go. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess he could talk to our. Could pick some of these other ones. Maybe since he's been like hanging out with uh, low lives. Those orcish. Yeah, looks looks good. I'm okay with that. <clears throat> da, 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 da. I've got to name him. Okay, back to the patrons. Kuba, I've already done you, Andrew. I had Andrew. But on Cody? Man, I've just done too many of these shows. I'm pretty sure I've not had Ingo. <laughs> I do not. I'm not info. Ingo! 
Ingo Wetfoot. Welcome to the party. Yeah. Okay, got two more. So we got our rogue. We've got our halfling. Did we do it? We haven't done an orc. Have we done an orc? Why don't we do a half orc sorcerer? I want to do a sorcerer. What would. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Sorcerer. I'll make a female half orc sorcerer. Play against type. Play against type. Oh, she looks vicious. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is this is gonna be great. Yeah, <clears throat> draconic bloodline. Your innate magic comes from the draconic magic that was mingled with your blood or that of your ancestors. I guess it's like dragon born. Eh, don't violate trademark. Born out of the man of starvation, certain dwellers of Celasta learn to drain magic from all those that surround them. Child of the Rift, aren't we all? <laughs> okay. Uh, another effect of the Rift and its cataclysmic closing was that some people around it were affected, uh, affected in their blood, gaining an innate ability to cast spells, but in an instinctive way. Uh, mana Painter, Draconic... Yeah, it's going... Draconic... <clears throat> Was there some more text I was supposed to read there? <laughs> Select the type of dragon and associated damage type of your ancestor. Oh. Ah, oh, cool. I've never made a sorcerer before ever, so this is this is new, but it looks like they get some You do poisons. I guess you could specialize in like one type of thing. Acid. Fire might be good, because you're doing those fire bolts and cold. You know, I've never had much luck with poison. I... Cold lightning. Eh, fire seems like a pretty good choice. I like hot sauce. Okay, which one have we not done? Uh, aristocrat. Does she look like an aristocrat? Yeah. <laughs> the type of snob that will kill you if they think you're beneath them. Background personality flags. Choose two. <clears throat> Authority. Egoism. Pragmatism, cynicism, authority, caution. Greed and violence. Let's go... I think you're a little cautious. No, that doesn't work for her. I mean, a sorcerer? She's going to be, like, out and about. She's probably pretty greedy. She's definitely violent. Let's go violent and... Um, yeah, make her nice. <laughs> I like... I, I was going to kill you, but I'm going to do it in a nice, kind way. Yes, very kind. Okay, so she's going to get a pretty good... Oh, look, that's that's a, that's a very good... Yeah, I know they're not 18s here, but... Uh, let's see, which of these are important for sorcerers? Not sure why Constitution is up there, but... Okay, that ought to work. Remember, the ones that are odd like this, you know, when I get those chances to uh, boost the score, that's where I can... Uh, Plan ahead. <clears throat> All right, same drill here. We probably want to go Arcana and what? It's religion, maybe or insight. Uh, insight's pretty. Did I pick insight already? I, I don't remember. Um, she's not the religious type. Languages. Old oh, Samarian. Oh, I get two. Okay. Uh, how about, uh, Elvish? Select the spells. Okay, she's got fire, so... Definitely want to do fire bolts as one. What is shadow armor? 
Grant three temporary hit points for one minute. Is that all? That sucks. <laughs> Shadow Dagger sounds pretty awesome. Annoying B. I went to I went to <laughs> Sorcery University for four years just to learn how to make an annoying B. Oh, let's see. What else? What else? You know, light is actually a pretty big deal in this game. Let's might be worth picking that as one. <clears throat> Shocking Grass. Sparkle. Target up to three objects that can be illuminated and light them up immediately. Actually, I think I'll take that over the light spell. Because I want them to be lit up, but me not to be lit up. Uh, what else do we need to pick? Shine. You got the shine, kid. An enemy you see becomes luminous for a while. Well, how is that different than sparkle? Light them up immediately? Was this only last for one round or something? Ignites light sources. Oh, this is for objects. Oh, I see. Let's do shine and sparkle then. Yeah, I'm not going to do sparkle. True strike... I never had any luck with that. Oh, <clears throat> you know I've always liked Acid Splash. Eh, what's Dancing Lights? Create Dancing Lights to move at your command. Uh, this would be good for like a entertaining the small children. I'm gonna go Shadow Dagger. <laughs> okay, and then we. I always get mage armor. I know, I'm kind of predictable. You know, normally I'd want to go magic missile. How many we got? We only got one more, but she's specializing in fire somehow, so... <clears throat> Maybe this uh, burning hands is the way to go. I'll give her the mage armor so she's got a little bit of a... Oh, but... That's a ritual. <laughs> is Comprehend Languages part of this part of this game that's a anything that's a ritual is, is great to have because then you don't have to have the you could just uh, I think you don't use a spell slot for it oh, that just looks awesome that's a really good looking sorceress totally badass <laughs> okay let's see got about two women to support the show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or, or am I? I don't know. Ah, da, 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 da. Come on, come on, come on. I wish there was a way to sort by... Sort by gender. Let's just use Becky last time. So, uh, no, <clears throat> might just have to <laughs> go with a name like Sam. <laughs> Could be a, a. Oh come on! I know there's. Just, I was just looking at. I was just looking at. Yeah, Sarah. <clears throat> <laughs> what the hey? What the heck? No 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 no. Yeah, you know what? It changed her. What did it change? I had a. I really liked the way she looked before. What was it that was different? It was one of these darker colors. Yeah, sort of green. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Sarah! Where's her last name? Quit trying to... Ah! Okay, they need to work on that, because that... <laughs> you changed her look like three times by accident. I put in a name! You keep changing their appearance. Okay, Sarah. Whew! It's tough. 
You know, I gotta get some more. I need more, uh, more diversity of my patch patrons. <laughs> That's tough. Sylvan elf. Who we not? We got a halfling. Mm. We don't have a dwarf. Okay, I can't do the snow dwarf because I already did a snow dwarf in my other party. Okay, what are we gonna make? We got a wizard. We don't have a cleric. <clears throat> we do have a pally. What do we have? We got that rogue. We got a paladin. We don't have a ranger, a wizard. How? You only get four characters, by the way. I just, you know, I hate druids. I just hate them. <laughs> Plants, animals. <laughs> druids. I mean, <laughs> rangers. <laughs> Train survivalists, fierce in battle. Yeah, let's do kind of a, like a hunter. Favorite enemy. Oh boy, this is the... Who knows? I mean, I don't... I guess beast is okay. What the hell's a celestial? Construct. Well, we know we're not going to be spending too much time in the woods. There it is with rocky ground, hills, and mountains. <laughs> Which one's like dungeon? <laughs> Swamp. Yeah, mountain. Uh, equipment looks good. <clears throat> I think a ranger can be sort of philosophical. I kind of like that idea, the philosophizing ranger. Yeah, probably kind and altruistic and yeah, kind. So kind and a nice ranger. Now preventing forest fires. Okay, that looks Well, I got an ugly party though. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Animal handling's not even part of this. So I guess she's not going to have like a... Or he's not going to have a... Uh, let's do survival for sure, man. That's a big one. Nature. Yeah, I can do stealth. Uh, da -da 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 Which one do we not have? I think we got them all at this point. I guess we could double up on... Uh, Elvish, maybe. Old Tamarian. Okay, we need to make another male. <clears throat> you know what? I think it's Gotrick. I think it was your birthday recently. What do you think? <laughs> Should we let Gotrick into our party? Clan, Forge Hand, Barley Brew, Black Shield, Redstone, Black Shield, Tall Barrel, <laughs> Redstone, Stout Shield, Forge Hand, Redstone. Not, not too many of these names. Ah, uh, Hair Shape looks good. I don't like that. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. These are good looking models on these. And put your back story here. Just yes, let me spend two hours writing. Yeah, who would sit down and write like a spend hours writing a backstory? I, I don't get those folks. <laughs> okay, now we got our party. Let's see, I think I just cancel out of this. Now I gotta try to remember them. <laughs> Alright, Peter was our tank. Then we've got our cell sword, Ingo. Putting the putting the band together. Putting the band together. And Sarah. That's a good looking group. Good looking group. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> pause it here. Then we'll get into the game. All right, looks like we're back. Let's go. Start the game. Adjust the brightness and contrast until both fly the fifth. Tip. 
Ingredients are various items like flowers, powders, and magic gems, allowing you to craft a variety of items from healing potions to powerful magic swords. Yeah, you do crafting in this game. I have been able to make some pretty cool stuff already. Click or press any key. <clears throat> Before the cataclysm, there were no gods on Celasta. No humans either. <laughs> Looking like the guy from Lord of the Rings. The rift opened. Oh, Lord. Some say it was a magical accident. Or the work of an evil god. No one knows for sure. The cataclysm destroyed the old High Elf Empire. Manakalan, they called it. And twisted the land beyond recognition. Now, only the brave and the foolish go there in search of ancient treasures. Brave and foolish, you say? But something is happening deep in those badlands. Something very inky. Whatever it is, it can't be good. <clears throat> oh, how do you know? Let's not jump to conclusions. It is the year 1024 after the Cataclysm. New states have arisen around the Badlands and Cravage treasures. An newly discovered road offers a safer route into the ruined heart of the Empire from the Principality of Masgoth, upsetting the balance of power. <clears throat> the Legacy Council is formed to ensure that this knowledge is shared. It issues a call for agents to explore the Badlands in its name. Adventurers flock to Kerr Kiflin, the Principality's capital and the home of the Council. All strangers meet in the grave keeps cask close to the council chamber. Yep. All games have to start in taverns. This beer tastes like donkey piss. Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> donkey piss. <laughs> Is this the place for the legacy council job? Hope I'm not too late. Ran into a bit of trouble on the way here. Sit. Relax. Perhaps you'd enjoy a pint of this obnoxious ale. If you're here for the council job, get in line. Though if this Lord Karen doesn't show up soon, I may go looking for him. I think they slipped him some Budweiser. Another round, barkeeper. <laughs> Four of your finest flagons of donkey piss, please. I worked hard on this. I see you're all making the best of this. Indeed. You mentioned something about some trouble. Would you care to elaborate? I was proceeding down the highway, minding my own business, when three brigands burst from the bushes and waylaid me. They carried me off to some ramshackle prison, an imperial ruin of some sort. Fortunately, the walls were as weak as this indifferent ale we're drinking. <laughs> Is it just me or they're not reading the script though? Okay, so this is just little tutorials to get you used to the game. We might as well do it. You can see what it looks like. Nobody really cares if you spoil these sections. Alright, so I think all I gotta do with this <coughs> character selection, basic movement. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you use the you can hold the right mouse button down to swirl around. You can zoom in, you couldn't do that in temple. <laughs> oh look at that. Hey. Oh, how far we've come in 50 years, or whatever the hell that is. I think it's, you hold the alt key down to see the treasures. Got a cautious mode. You know, if you can stand the slowdown, you know, that's supposed to help you spot uh, traps better. And uh, journal. <clears throat> is there a way to turn this off? Understood. There's the journal. Escape the bandit's prison. Find a way out. Track, untrack the quest. It's got a bestiary that fills in as you go. And, you know, fight monsters and you'll do a survival check and that'll start to fill in some... Oh, a lot of creatures. Some info. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, crawl, blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. crawl through the... A lot of crawling and climbing. It's very XCOM-like in that sense. 
It's like very the positioning is really really cool. Oh, that's neat. It's torch. Got my torch. Directable objects. I don't think there's anything that way. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's a rock. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool. How do I... There we go. Get it? There we go. You can do it. <laughs> Crawl under. Leave the cave. No path to destination. There you guys up there. <clears throat> uh, jumping, jumping, jumping. Yeah, they gotta be, I think it's strength or something to jump. Some of the characters can climb and, and jump further than the uh, other ones. You can even like climb on walls and fly later on. It's uh, really awesome. And knock that thing over. There's pretty good puzzles in this game, too. What is that I'm looking at there? Oh, I just... I just killed those guys by not gonna... Yeah, sometimes you'll see, like, a stalactite. You can knock down, I guess you could shoot something that's stalactite and drops down and kills them that way. Environmental thing. You know, I was just reading a Xanth, the uh, a new Xanth, new. <laughs> I was reading a Xanth novel and they they have a rhyme in there to help you remember stalactites and stalagmites. Stalagmites. <clears throat> and the the reminder is when the mites go up, M-I-T-E-S, when the mites go up, the tights come down. <laughs> you have to read the It's Fallen in Games. Name of that novel if you want to know the story behind that. Looting and Inventory Management. Yes. <clears throat> click on the chest. You know, if you're like, should I click on a chest? You haven't ever played a role-playing game before. <laughs> if you need that tip. Okay. There we go. Good looking environments too. Pretty sure this is Unity. Nice move, that trip with the wolf. Glad you're no worse for wear. My flagon is empty of ale and Lord Karen still isn't here. The council is likely busy with important matters of state. And we're not. So, have patience. Well, let me tell you my story. I, too, was accosted on the way here, but I faced my foes head on. So what are you waiting for? Spit it out, why don't you? Spit it out. Now, I thought just think this is a great way to uh, set all this up. You know, give each character a little moment to shine. I'm going to pause it one second here. Okay, so I think this is the combat tutorial dashing. Yes, it's like I was saying, the mobility and the uh, <clears throat> placement. It's very key to this game. Now, here's the part. If you like the game or hate the game, it's going to be right here. This is the, uh, the all-important combat. And you can see it is very XCOM-ish. So you got our tiles there. We can move forward and attack. We've got our various buttons here. Now, I don't know how familiar you are with the 5th edition rules. Now, there's the stuff about bonus actions, main actions, and some it's similar in some ways to Pathfinder, but there's some pretty key differences. I think for this, we probably just want to rush. Just What kind of powers does he have? Reveal Celestial Fiends and Undead. We don't need that. Lay on hands. You know what that does. Oh, this is going to be nice. We can uh, neutralize poisons and cure disease. Okay. 
So this is good. This guy's like a good combination of cleric and fighter. Okay, let's just move in and attack. You can see the dice! The dice! Uh, I think he's only got that one attack. Alright, and the wolf. Starving. Oh, there's. Uh oh! Here comes another. You want to try shoving? Let's try to shove. Uh, oh, push away or not prone? Let's push him off. Try this out. <laughs> That's great. Well, can they push me off? Uh oh. Yeah, I don't know. Do they push players off? Dodging. Uh, yeah. Don't want to dodge it. I want to kill it. Do I have to dodge it? I don't think so. <clears throat> the, the only bad part about shoving that one off, I won't be able to get the treasure. I don't think we're really looting anything at this point. Anyway, da -da. click on the thing with the thing. Oh. <laughs> Disengaging. To avoid an opportunity attack, you can use the disengage action. Yes, good life advice. Keep you from getting engaged. There's our initiative rolls. I mean, they did those dice rolls just beautifully. And I don't know if I can check it right now. Let's just see if I can do this. Yeah, you can look at this. You can actually change all these different kinds of dice sets. Really nice. If, you, if you're really into the dice mechanics and, and the math. Okay, so it looks like it's trying to teach me. <laughs> you will learn how to disengage, damn it! Okay. So we won't be able to do anything. We can we can back away. If you just if you just back off. Okay, well that works. Can't get back across there now, but okay. <laughs> the attack of opportunity is basically a free attack to get on you. You're lucky you weren't attacked by Sorax. I don't remember anyone asking your opinion. The badlands are thick with them. Shape shifting bastards. Go easy on him. He's just a harmless old drunk. Probably saw lizard folk or dragonborn or something. You think I don't know the difference? All those spines on their backs, those jaws. You've never seen anything like it. Not lizard folk, not troglodyte, not dragonborn. I'm telling you. <laughs> no one believes in Sorax anymore. Oh, except the Church of Anar, of course. There's a Sorak under every bed, if you believe them. Easy now. Don't mock people for their faith. Read them books. Read them Soraks books. are masters of deception. Yeah, there's one of these guys in every bar. You'd never know. Oh, come on. Huh, <laughs> you'll see. So anyway, Soraks might be legend, but orcs are quite real, and not just in the Badlands. You are a half orc. <laughs> I would think. <laughs> Orcs are real. Uh, okay. And left the main highway, hoping to save time by traversing the hills. The views were magnificent, but I should have kept my eye on the path. I'm really curious how the sorcerer is going to play out. I haven't ever done one. Into Stygian darkness. Stygian darkness, which is much stygier than regular darkness. Okay, here she goes. Oh, this is going to be all about the lighting and light sources. Uh, what do we have here? Let's complete quest objective. What's our objective? <coughs> light your way. Uh, I guess I need to... Use my torch. So I can click on that. <clears throat> Let's try out that spell though, because I got some cantrips that should work. For it. 
No free hand. Oh, come on. What's this? Click to cast a light cantrip of one of your... You cannot cast the light cantrip. So they... One of the rules in D&D... &D some people don't even pay any attention to this, but... You're supposed to have a free hand. I think that's called the... Is that somatic? Anyway, this gets complicated, but... Uh, you're not supposed to, like if you're if you have stuff in both hands, or I guess that you got to have the free hand to cast with, make some kind of gestures, I guess. <laughs> I want to try that. Uh, no, not the shine. Oh, maybe I didn't pick up that light catch, but I thought I did. Well, we should be able to use the fire bolt, and that should do it. Yep, so that makes sense. If you see a torch... Now this is it's a big problem if you're trying to fight enemies and they're in the dark. Because uh, then you'll be missing all the time. Especially if you're you know trying to hit somebody with a bow from, from a distance and they're in, in dim light or dark light. So that's the reason why they're trying to make you aware of this. Upon my word... This is an orc hideout. The man Uda is unmistakable. You know, I don't think they really factored in that you might be playing a half-orc. <laughs> yes. That orc stench. I love the idea of, you know, the, the our half-orc sorcerer aristocrat. Tutorial healing. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, this is making me have to sneak around, I guess. Yeah, 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 I get it. The chest. One of the annoyances of the game, though, man, they really take this so seriously, the encumbrance. I mean, you really cannot be carrying around much stuff. That's interesting. So she's got a spell pouch there. It's clogging up that slot. I think you have to have that there. Let's see. What do I need to... What does it want me to do? Sneak past the orcs. I'm going to use cautious mode. And there's a lot of benefits to hiding and being stealthy, as you'll see. The system is all about what they call the advantage and disadvantaged roles. So that has to do with, like, if you want to hit somebody and you're hidden, then you see it's got that plus sign there. That means that you'll get basically a roll two d20s and you'll pick the best of those as your roll. That's pretty powerful. Of course, there's the opposite thing is the disadvantage roll. So if I, like, try to hit... If I if I wasn't um, if I wasn't uh, stealthed, this might actually have disadvantage because uh, it looks like he's kind of in the dark there. But anyway, we're just supposed to sneak past him. It looks like those circles are kind of showing you uh, how much noise she's making, maybe. It's just, you know, it's just showing you all the different mechanics of the game. I mean, does it, if this isn't giving you the itch to play this, <laughs> you're like, ooh, yeah, I hope they use that. You know, it's, they got everything there. It's just about the level design at this point, right? I mean, can they use these mechanics they're setting up in a fun way? Okay, I think we could deactivate that cautious mode. Woohoo! Wee! <laughs> Guess we go this way. Man, just look at these. Really nice. Got into a discussion last uh, tabletop session about druids and dungeons and like. 
Can you use those spells that involve plant growth and things in a dungeon where there's no sunlight, no way to grow things? And we actually got into like, well, what about fungus? <laughs> what about lichen? <laughs> what about like microbial, uh, microscopic animal or plants that live on the human body? <laughs> Eyelashes and things. Okay. Here's how to rest. This is a little bit tricky. So what you do... Yeah, we're going to get our spell slots back. We haven't used any, so that's not a big deal. Recover some dice. We'll have to talk about that later, how that works. Full HP, and then... Uh, I guess I don't have any spells to... Uh, select from, maybe since she's a sorcerer. Does it say anything about using a ration? I don't see anything there, but you definitely use up your rations as you go along. So you gotta remember to buy food. I would have slaughtered every one of those green-skinned monsters. Orcs have a very distinctive stick. If Lord Karen keeps us waiting much longer, I might greet him with a dagger. We've all told a tale of our travels here. All but one of us. Yes, but I have a good reason for that. It's none of your bloody business. Come on now, don't get killjoy. We all sang for our supper. Your turn. Fine. You want to know the truth? I stopped on the way here to visit an old friend of mine and discovered he was up to his eyeballs in debt with a lone shark. So he was in dire straits? Indeed. He put up a family... You know, now that I'm looking at his beard, I'm wondering, is that a real beard? Acquire it because, you see, I can be quite stealthy when necessary. Looks like he's in disguise. <laughs> okay, I thought we already did the stealth mission. Stealth. Here's some hunkered down in the dark. Yeah, we just did this, people! Oh, I guess it's trying to show me. Yeah, since he's in stealth mode, he can see the footprints. One set of footprints in the swamp. There's his gear. So you, the thief tools. You know, I find if I want to have a, every character have those because it does. Um, they can try to pick a lock too if this guy fails. If they, as long as they have that uh, one of those kits. I guess you could just trade it amongst them. Might be tedious. How much does that weigh? <laughs> it weighs a pound. <laughs> All right, let's see. What else do we need to do here? I don't know why we need four torches. I don't think these things ever run out. Well, it does say it only lasts an hour, so I guess maybe they do run out. Not a big deal, I don't believe. <clears throat> so I guess the question is, how do you want to do your offhands? If you have a... See that little flag there? So if he's... It says, this weapon is not light, preventing the uh, character from using a bonus attack with the offhand weapon. So what I could... I could either do this, I give him two light weapons, two daggers... And they have a plus seven to hit. Uh, the first one only gets the proficiency bonus from his dex. So that first attack, you get five. Next attack, you would not get that plus five bonus to your uh, to your damage. But here's the thing. Uh, since he's a rogue, you get something called a sneak attack, which is either 1d6 or 2d6 as you level up. It's just kind of automatic damage that you get if you hit. If you hit. So the rogue does not get multiple attacks like a fighter, or maybe that paladin. I haven't played him enough to, to know. So there's some advantage to having dual wielding that you wouldn't think about normally, in that you have two, two chances to try to hit and get that sneak attack, all important sneak attack damage. So that's a, something to think about. So even though this rapier looks like it's a better weapon, you only get that one shot, you know, and if you miss, too bad. You don't, not only do you uh, miss that attack, you don't even get your sneak attack damage in. So it's kind of worth it, I think, to have those weapons there. That offhand weapon. Or you could do the bow, the short bow, you know, as long as you, you can try to get some advantage. 
with uh, being stealthy and sneaking around, that sort of thing. But I don't really want this guy to be sneaky or to be a, uh, uh, an archer. I have a ranger for that. Antitoxin. Or you can use the basic poison. Let's just try the poison out. The thing about poison is it's you have to use it right then. It only lasts a minute, I think. And it's only so many hits. There's a lot of different kinds of poison that you get later on. I'm kind of playing this guy almost the way I would like a rogue and um, and wow. Kind of thinking about it that way. Yes, 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 yes. Hot picking. Aren't you glad? You know, thank you guys for not doing some stupid ass mini game for picking locks. I hate those. You want to make it just as tedious as it would be in real life. No, you don't. You don't. Just roll a die. Let the, the, the character do it. You fail, you fail. Okay, we. Reach the next coal job, so I guess we're just being sneaky this whole time. See, it says unknown creature, but with that survival, you'll notice after battles they do these survival rolls to try to figure out if they can learn more about the uh, creatures. That's pretty cool. I think next, I think I'll suggest that to my various dungeon masters. That I don't know if that's part of the official game. I've never had a DM say like, "Roll a survival check," you know, after the combat. Then again, we've never really asked, hey, can I study that creature? Can I dissect it and look at it closely? I mean, I don't know what you need to say to make that happen. All right, so it's picked up a couple of crafts, and you can see this is the crafting system. Um, I guess he doesn't have a poisoner's kit yet, but we can pick those up later, and then you can, you can see the kind of stuff you can make. You can make arrows. It does keep track of your ammo, so you probably need to do that eventually. Unfortunately, uh, you know, you have to have these projectile parts. I don't know if you can make those projectile parts somehow. You know, if I'd have been doing this game, I would have made it so that you could... You know, the little game I was working on... My idea was that... The old weapons and stuff you find, you could salvage it. You know, break it up into components. You know, take a little few, few bits off of this sword you don't want, let's just say a dagger, and make some arrowheads with it. And why not? Yes, disarming the traps. So this isn't guaranteed, you know, it's a roll. And you do not get XP for doing it, unfortunately. Hey. He's rolling pretty good. I like how you can you can go in here and really look at the rolls. I just don't think you can. I guess everything you need to know is here. So rolls a dex check, thieves tools ability check against DC 10, rolls 11. Oh, there we go. So it's so high because his dex is high, then he gets his proficiency bonus. I guess that's with the tools. Take a look there. Just confirm this. His uh, thieves tools gives us a plus 9. So I guess that builds in the uh, double proficiency using this kind of tool. So he ought to be really good with those tools. It looks like it checks it checks your dexterity and then the proficiency. So this must already have the the dex built into it. Okay. <clears throat> but one of the interesting things again, I did mention this already, but you don't necessarily have to be a thief. You know, you could just have another character that knows how to use thieves' tools, and you know, get Liam's gem. Oh, I guess it's right there. But it's not so rigid about having to have these designated roles. All right there's the gem, Liam's heirloom, fruit of the heirloom, right where you thought it would be. There you are, you filthy crook! You? 
What? You're drunk. Get out of here before I kill you. Think you scare me? Not anymore. A oh. grave mistake. Well, combat, maybe. Critical characters. Don't let them die. They are critical. All right. So I'll be able to talk about some of the things I was telling you about here. So, like, what I could do is switch to my... You can only switch once per round, by the way. So you want to think about this. I've actually got quite a few options here. I could switch to my short bow. I'm hidden, so I'd get advantage on the attack. Probably take him out one shot. And I'd, I would get the... Uh, the sneak attack, because anytime you have an advantage, you get that. Uh, or, I got something called a... Uh, actually, where is... I thought there's maybe the type of rogue I have doesn't have cunning action. Maybe they don't give me that option yet. <laughs> uh, but maybe later, we'll see. Uh, there's a cunning action option uh, that you can activate where you can run further. There's different things you can do with it. Try to hide again. But just to keep things uh, simple, let's switch to our bow. And you can see that gives us this uh, advantage roll. Try that. So we see our... Oh, critical! Critical hits, you do more damage. You have to re-roll your damage dice, if I recall correctly. What do you say about Karen? Maybe we're here looking for a fight. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe we're here just to raise hell and break heads. A fight, is it? I'm sure we can find an outlet for your enthusiasm. Well, if you're here for Lord Karen of the Legacy Council, that would be me. Good voice work, too. <laughs> we should get paid for waiting. Fine. I'd like to present you with a bill for the time we just spent cooling our heels. Feel free. The council's bursary enjoys a good laugh. Might we ask a bit more about this Punch the bursar. Sir, if you please. Well, I suppose it's better if you know what you're doing. What do you want to know? We just want to go to the Badlands. Ah, very good, thank you. We should go, don't you think? Very well. Come, gather your things. You're late for your swearing in. Hurry up and wait. <laughs> the story of my life. Yeah, that's the kind of response that would totally tick off a DM. Like sitting there with like a notepad and all these notes about, oh, okay. <laughs> ah, we don't care. Fine then. You know, it takes this little notepad out. Like, eh, you know, that, that's a <laughs> short third plus one you were supposed to find out. <laughs> Guess what? That's now nothing. Why do we keep finding empty chests in this dungeon? Hmm. Click a key. Finding your way. All right, so now we're into the game itself. What's it want us to do? We click on the M and just go straight to where you want to go. I think you have to go there first to check it out. Uh, there's these factions in the game. They give you really cool items. Yeah, this pretty cool faction system. I don't know if we're going to get into that right away. We'll talk about it later, maybe. Uh, I think we just want to go... Yeah, there's a little blinking dot on our mini-map there to keep us oriented. Really cool scavenger system. So you don't have to carry all the loot with you. I just think that's totally brilliant. I'm going to have to talk more about that. Just trying to get to the council. <clears throat> this place is magnificent. I at least want to get these guys to where you can see some of the more interesting stuff you can do in combat. I think the blue is like to talk to them. If they don't have anything above their heads, I don't think they talk. Yeah, he's I never kinda... get so close to the embassies. Yeah, there it goes. Just automatically triggers that cutscene. Look at the size of this council hall. So this is what they spend our taxes on. Exactly. Look, is that the princess? <laughs> princess? Wait. Is she leaving? Apparently so. Then who will administer? She doesn't want to be part of the royal family anymore. 
The maid who empties her chamber pot. <laughs> the maid who empties her chamber pot. No, we're not as important as that. Perhaps a stable boy. You thought it would be the princess. Doesn't she lead the council? Like, you know, they kind of make you feel sort of chamber, disrespected or unimportant. Distance. Lady Keen, the council's good. keeper, is trusted by all. Lord Caron. Yes, my lady. Are these your new deputies? They are, my lady. My name is Lyra Keen, oath keeper of the council. Pot down. And I will be administering your vows. Who's that? Once sworn in, you will carry the authority of the council wherever you go. Your every action will reflect on the council's reputation. Remember that. Always. Now, please, raise your right hands. Do you, each and all, solemnly swear your lives and allegiance to this council and promise to carry forth our mission to protect our alliance from any who would threaten the common good. I swear. I swear. What if you're left-handed? Lord Caron will enter your name into the council's register. Thank you for your service. Congratulations, deputies. Wait, that's it. <laughs> You're expecting a parade? <laughs> Ingo. Were you hoping for a kiss from the princess? <laughs> no, no, I don't know. It, it just feels a bit anticlimactic. Sorry to disappoint. So, the mission. As I'm sure you know, <clears throat> the council maintains a number of outposts to secure the border between the Principality and the Marches. One of them is the former Imperial Fortress, KLM. It's held by some 50 troops under well, the sounds like they're saying KLM. He sends us weekly status reports, or rather, he used to. We haven't heard a word from him in three weeks. Leave immediately for KLM and find out if anyone there is still alive. If Captain Henrik or anyone else is still breathing, bring him back. The council wants a first-hand report. Well, we're good to go. Right. I guess that's that. It's on to KLM. On to KLM. Yeah, there's the factions. We'll find some items you can give to the various factions. Can't make everybody happy. It's kind of like uh, in WoW, you know how you have those factions you can do quests for and you get some special items that are exclusive to that faction? Uh, same sort of thing here. What does it want us to do? Level up. Head back to the Grave Keeps Cask. And that's another complication. Either love it or hate it, you know, but uh, you can't just level up instantly. You have to do a long rest. So. If you're in the middle of a dungeon, you might have to wait till you find a spot where you can rest. But I think all we can do is short rests. Yeah, you can only do the short rests anywhere. I could tell you more about that in a second. Let's see. I think we just talked to him. Hello, adventurers. What can I offer? Hello. <laughs> Your beer tastes bad. I think they did a great job though with the dialogues and the like the way they shifted zoomed to different people into talking. He's very prof professionally this feels sure. like a to me to like a super high budget slick professional uh, all the way. Uh, it's more like a large bedroom really. And it has not come across no, to me as some kind of indie or budget game, game at all. It feels very good. You know, I'd expect to pay 40, 60 bucks for this and <laughs> be happy. 20? I mean, come on. Alright, level up. Now, I did notice a bug earlier in my earlier game where if you try to level up out of order, you it freezes up. It won't finish. And so, I think it's important just to go 1, 2, 3, 4 down the row there instead of... You get a little excited about leveling up your mage or whatever. Don't do it. Alright. When you hit a creature with a melee weapon, you can spend one spell slot to deal 2d8 additional damage. Alright. Yeah, I haven't played a paladin either. This is kind of new to me. So they got a pretty cool... Uh, if it's an undead or a fiend, they get an extra 1d8. Wow. 
So this is something that will get more powerful as it level up, which is nice. You get a f fighting style over well, quite a quite a nice package. My friend plays a paladin in our campaign, and he's like one of these dudes that dives so deep into the research. <laughs> he's always like just pulling off these this incredible amount of damage. So we can do a defense. Wearing armor, you gain a plus one bonus. You probably get more stuff as you go further, right? I think you get more stuff than that later on. Maybe not. I don't know. Oh, let's see our options here. The weapon must have the two-handed or versatile property for you to gain this benefit. So again, the question is basically, do you want that shield? This is about as close, I think, to a tank as you can get. So I got this on my other tank as well. So if you got another character close to you and somebody attacks them once per round, you can use this ability and it gives it, who's ever attacking gets disadvantage. So it makes them a lot more likely to miss. Uh, you do have to be wielding a shield to use it. Dueling. When you are wielding a melee weapon in one hand or in no other weapons, you gain a plus two bonus to damage rolls with that weapon. Interesting. So it's got to be, I guess, like a long sword with no shield. So you trade your shield, I guess, for plus two bonus to damage. This one's kind of a trade-off, I suppose. So you get plus one bonus to your AC. Just seems kind of lame, though. If that's the only thing you ever get for choosing that. Or a great weapon fighting. When you roll a one or two on a damage die for an attack you make with a melee weapon that you're wielding with two hands. So I assume that'd be like a great sword, two-handed sword. You re-roll the die. You must use the new roll even if it is a one or two. Hmm. Well, half a dozen to one. <laughs> How's the expression go? <laughs> Six of one, half a dozen of the other. I, I don't know. To me, this protection, I mean, you are stuck with the shield, but it does... That's a pretty cool thing that will be you'll be using a lot. That can make a lot of difference. Probably more so than just a plus one to damage. And a paladin. What would a paladin... You know, I'm going to go with something else, though, just because I've already chosen protection on the other characters. So let's go with just defense. We'll see if that ever goes gets better. I hope it does, because that would be great. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> Hopefully as you level up you hit a, get a few extra perks. Matter of fact, I guess we could check this. Yeah, with some of these things you uh, you hit certain levels and you get a new ability. All right, yeah, cunning action. So I guess we get that now. So the action can be used to take dash, disengage, or hide. That's actually a really cool thing to have, too. Fighting style, ranger spell casting. Huh. Okay, archery. Plus two bonus to attack rolls with ranged weapons. Or we get that same defensive thing, two weapon fighting, dueling. I really want this guy to be a good archer. He gets some spells too. Animal friendship. Oh, we could charm an animal, cure wounds, detect magic. That might be good because uh, otherwise, you know, we wouldn't know what we have in, in our inventory that's magical or not. It's not as good as identify though. I think I might, how many do we get? Two? I think I might pick it. What are these other? Fog cloud. Generate a sphere of thick fog for a limited time. Characters inside it cannot attack those on the outside. Well, that might be pretty cool. Hunter's mark. An enemy gets additional damage from you. You can easily detect it for a limited time. That's probably the obvious choice. Oh, and it's a bonus action too? Yep. <laughs> I'll tell you more about that. 
Okay, then we got our sorceress. Sorcerer. She gets some sorcerer points. Flexible casting. Allows the conversion of spell slots into sorcery points and vice versa as a bonus action. Interesting. Again, totally new to me how this works. Unlearn spell. Why would I want to unlearn a spell? Select a spell to unlearn. Let the computer make the choices. Why do I want to unlearn a spell? What, do I have to do that? No, let's go. Ah, what the hell? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Select new spells. Is that part of the sorcerer? They have to unlearn a spell? Well, let's just see what happens. Oh, I guess we just ignored it. That is weird. Okay, so if we unlearn something, then I, I can't learn it back, but I get two spells? That is, I don't understand that very well, I have to say. Well, okay, uh, we could do Thunder Wave. That sounds pretty cool. It's like an AoE. Puts out fires, removes on fire, thunder damage. And we could do... You know, magic missiles just hard to beat. Try those two. I don't understand this unlearn mechanic, though. That Let me just make sure I got this. I'm going to try this one more time. Okay. So if I, d I have to... I can't... Nope, change. So I have to do that. You must learn all your... Sp I could just ignore it. And then I can learn an additional spell. Oh, duh, I get it now. <laughs> thinking of, I was thinking of her as a wizard. Uh, so she's got those... Uh, you know, you have a limited... Okay, it makes sense to me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, um, so you know what? You could just skip that. Uh, color spray. I'm kind of embarrassed now. <laughs> Jump, magic missile, sleep, thunder wave. I usually go with sleep. It's a pretty good option. It can make a hell of a difference sometimes. You can change your list of prepared spells. You have selected four spells to prepare. So we could trade those if we wanted to. Oh, I didn't realize he had detect magic already. Yeah, I might actually want to reload that because uh, yeah, we'll go with it. Who cares? But you probably wouldn't. You don't really need multiple characters with that detect magic. Uh, I think I do have to have it prepared to be able to use it, though. Let's just clear this. And he doesn't need... What would be good for him? You know, Bless is pretty cool, but it's not as cool as you might think. I guess I'll learn it anyway. Probably want Cure Wounds. Which one of these was the bonus? That's a bonus action. Gain additional radiant damage for a limited time. This one takes a full action to use. That was a bonus action. So you got two in here that are bonus actions. Yeah, do I? You know, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna lose the. These two, because I want the bonus actions. Wait, was that? Yeah, bonus. That's not bonus. That's bonus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do the cure. Okay. Hopefully I get a chance to use this soon and I can show you why I did it that way. Okay, so we're good to go now. Now we gotta buy some food for the journey. And I don't
don't think he's got any food. We gotta go out. I'm gonna wanna introduce this probably to the scavenger system. We'll see. Maybe not. Yeah, this is for crafting. Da, 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 da. Gotta make sure we buy the food first, though. And I don't think he sells rations. Adventuring gear? Oh, I think we need to skip him for now. We want to go to the general store. I think it's uh, four rations, or one ration a day, so you got four well, per day for your whole your party. So you, you need quite a few to make it. There is a spell you can get called Create Food that might be worth looking into at some point. And the food weighs quite a bit. Yeah, so it's, I guess, three pounds each. So you don't want to get carried away because you get so much you won't be able to, you start getting some penalties for having a... Too much weight. So he's got one. Let's just load everybody up with the. Uh, let's see, a couple more. Make sure everybody's got a full stack. Let's see, it's doing five each. And that should be sufficient. I have run out of food before, and it's not pleasant. This would be a good time, too, to trade some of these weapons. Six gold for that. Don't really need four torches. Guess you just have to drop those. Javelins? Yeah, we've already got some scrolls. I don't know what good these clothes do. Just sell those. Okay, we need a good look here at our party. I think we're just about good to go. Let's go ahead and put this stuff on. Why does he... I guess you have to load that one at a time. What's that? Scroll of Revivify. Not sure what Revivify does. Some type of healing, I assume. How much does that weigh? Six pounds worth of torches? I guess we can deal with that. He's got a smithy kit. What is there? There's a candle there, too. Wow, this guy's got a lot of light sources. So we can add this to our crafting guy. I don't think it matters who reads it. Just checking to see if I got any junk I want to sell while we're here at the vendor. Uh, there's potions of healing. I'm going to give those to my... So I already got some. I'm trying to give those to my front row folks. Okay. Okay. All right, let's see. Care crafting. So we've got an herbalism kit. Do we have the. Not in inventory. Scroll kit. I'm not worried about scrolls. I would like uh, to be able to make some arrows and things. Who's our... He doesn't have a poisoner's kit. Yeah, we can't have that. Deputy, so thank you were in that too. Nope. Are you Sexual dialogue. Council? I'm Annie Bagmorder, quartermaster of the Scavengers Guild. Ah, there we go, Guild. Scavengers Guild. We don't have a seat in there, but they all know exploring the Badlands without us would be a bad idea. That's why you should stop by our headquarters downtown. You'll need our services, I'm sure. Is that, uh, compulsory? <laughs> no. But you'll find our services it is useful. useful. Everyone does. Did Lord Karen not tell you? No, he pretty much stuck to giving orders. Oh, right. Anyway, we offer plenty of help and advice to beginners like you. We are grown-ups, you know. 
At least most of us are. Of course you are. Well, good voice good acting. Uh, basically, what happens again? You don't have to lug everything you find. Go back and forth to town trying to sell stuff. Bend. Uh, you can just leave it. Basically, at least. Should we check out their headquarters? It's not far, but I've had enough talking. Let's go kill some monsters. I probably should go talk to him. If there's business to be done, we can't afford not to. Basically, it doesn't happen instantly, but they save you the trouble of having to go. Uh, you know, back and forth to town, selling stuff, weighing yourself down. Well, what do you have to have with a food? I also have that. Could... What do you have Here's to a way to skip this. Oh, I keep clicking the wrong thing. <laughs> Can we see your wares? Okay, let's just see if we got all the gear we want. So he's got chain mail. It's probably good enough for now. Leather armor's fine. What is this? I guess everybody gets a little bauble of some sort. You know, one thing that might be nice is to get rid of that pouch and get some other type of uh, spell focus. Okay, Poisoner's Kit. That's what I want. Let's make sure I don't have that on somebody. All right. Herbalism, Smallsmith. Herbal oh, I got two herbalism kits. Probably don't need two, but that's okay. Go ahead and buy him the poisoner kit. Where'd he go? Yeah. Alright, I think we're probably good for... Good for gear for now. Could probably make some small improvements, but eh. I'll talk to the scavenger lady and get the heck out of here. Scavenger. Ah, you came. You picked our curiosity. So, what exactly do you have to offer? You don't know. Your ass better call somebody. You sell healing potions. What else? What kind of help do you have to offer? I don't know if this is required to activate these Simple. services. Now, people like you typically carry out missions for the council. Right. In the marches, even in the badlands. Sometimes far away, like Captain Merrin. Uh, who's Captain Merrin? You really must be new. She's one of yours. Senior deputy of the council. Anyway, you trek out to some old ruin in the Badlands, kill a bunch of orcs. Well, you're still a bit green, so let's say. <sighs> Ouch! How about you're rats? Hurting our feelings. Orcs will hurt much more than your feelings, believe me. And stop interrupting, it's rude. So let's say you find yourself with a whole load of rusty swords, leather armor, shields too much for you to log back here. Oh! So we're puny as well as green. Thanks so much. So instead, you brave heroes just clear the place of monsters and draw us a nice clean map. Then we take our carts and pick up every piece of junk. We bring it back, we sell it, and we split the profits with you. Okay, we so I think we get off, the idea. We go off to kill more bad. For a percentage. What? Not in your little bag. So I guess they give you don't give you quite as much well, thank you. Fine. as you would. You could lug it back, but I mean that'd be way, totally tedious. In what? In getting our people, the outpost is perfect for us. Yeah, right. they want to, that would be appreciated. They want a base for in us, the Badlands. Okay. The more we do. Oh, yeah. so this, I guess it's going to introduce us to the guild system as well. And I hope it will, friend. I guess we'll see you around then. Sure. Good luck out there. All right, so that's done. Well, she doesn't sell potions, though, right? Let me just check something here quick. Clear don't think she sells anything. Do you sell healing? No, we don't. Well, stay in the light. So maybe getting a on their good side just gives you more treasure. Let's see. Uh, where is the nice journal? Here we go. Factions. 
scavengers. The section shows you favor, joins you in battle. Sympathy plus 11. You know, some of these, it's kind of like, again, like a wow, the, if you have a certain reputation, you can buy certain items from them. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and quick save it here because I got stuck last time on this chest. So as far as I can tell, each character gets one chance to open up a, a chest. And if you fail, that's just it. <laughs> you can try all your different characters, but you know if the rogue doesn't do it, they're probably not going to either. Like just a couple of little, uh, little flavor items, I suppose. 25 gold. Why is that worth 25 gold? Well, I guess that's just a little thing to see. <laughs> Did you remember to check all the chests? Party stash. Yeah, you know what a party stash does. Anything you don't want to carry with you into the wild. However, I don't... I don't know if it's... Like, if I put my materials in there... Let's just try that out and see what happens. A little experimentation. Yeah, projectile parts. So I put my projectile parts in there. Let's see. Let's see if it'll still let me use it. Nope. Gotta have them on you. I guess that's realistic, sure, but Yeah, this is the one that's locked. Okay, let's see. Do I have guidance? He's got to have a free hand to do any of this stuff. Oh, that's nasty. So to cast any spells, I'd have to switch. That is nasty. I might want to make a... Yeah, you could cast Shield of Faith and based... I don't know if that would... <laughs> Question. Does she... If you cast Shield of Faith, does that count as a shield for your various... Uh shield abilities that's interesting i don't know but anyway i, I went to see if they have guidance i don't think anybody's got guidance so we're just going to have to try it the guidance would have given me a little bit of an extra i think a 1d4 advantage okay i'll open it that time antitoxin the potion of healing and a scroll of revivify. Okay, and I think that's. I think we're ready to go to the outpost. So we can just. Uh, where's the exit? Well, I guess we have to follow the little dot. Oh, there we go. I'm going to pause it here for a minute. All right, let's go. Get in that blue box. You must gather your party before venturing forth. All right, tutorial travel map. Yeah. You know, every good... CRPG needs at least one good looking map. I'm actually wondering now, I bet you their Kickstarter probably had an option for a cloth map. They did launch this on Kickstarter, right? I don't even. <laughs> I'd love to have a cloth map. Okay, we just click there. Alright, you see, I got 20 units of food. Fatigue, fresh. And this will be using uh, ooh, travel settings. 
Cast the Goodberry spell when the long rest starts. Oh, that'd be a great spell to have prepared then. I guess I don't have those. I might want to pick those up when I can learn some spells. Didn't even think about that, but yeah, that'd be great not to have to worry about rations. And you have to carry all those rations around with you? That would be great. Maybe we can turn these other things on too. Okay. Start travel. We got some options. You can go fast and slow, and obviously that has a. Uh, Pluses and minuses. Let's see here. Eight hours a day, other activities. Sometimes the normal routine will be interrupted and your heroes will need to rest. All right. So one thing I was wondering, like, how do you change your crafts? Oh, like that. <laughs> so you can interrupt and start crafting some stuff. I'm not going to bother with this now, but you, you see how you could make some arrows. Or I think the crafting bonus, all that does is make it, make it a little bit faster, I think. So what is that? Four hours for him to do it. Well, four hours for that person, too. Crafting DC is eight, so I guess you roll a die. So there's a chance you could fail to make the item. I thought I read something about there's some way to speed up crafting. I don't look at that again. Resuming a journey. I love these little uh, little travel journal. Sarah manages to collect some angry violet. So they're picking up materials, ingredients. Let's see. Does it tell me what the roles are for these? Doesn't look like it. Must be survival for some of these. I was hoping having a ranger in the party would mean I would find more food along the way. Uh-oh, got surprised. So that saint stinks. I guess it's probably a perception roll for that, or maybe survival. This is probably all spelled out in the manual somewhere. Matter of fact, I'm going to check that out real quick. You know, I'm not 100% sure there is a manual. <laughs> I looked all around for it. <laughs> Maybe it's just all built into the game, though. That's kind of a shocker. Usually they do a, a manual. So I'm just going to guess that perception is what determines whether it gets surprised or not. Maybe it'll tell me somewhere here. You've been surprised. Hmm. Ready in action. Yes, that's another cool thing we could talk about. Change weapon shortcuts. Yes, yes, yes. So since I was surprised, they get free round. And you notice how they're all in the dark. It's a little, a little icon there tells you they're unlit. So again, if I'm shooting at them, I have disadvantage. This one's lit. Yeah, I get it. I'm really surprised. Yeah, something else I need to add to this. Maybe it's here somewhere and I didn't notice, but, uh... You know, some way to speed these combats up. I always like it when you can just skip the animations or, uh... At least speed them up somehow. I mean, it's, it's really nice and cool. But, you know, after seeing the same battles... <laughs> you kind of lose interest in it. Watching those animations after a while, you just want it to be a little snappier. But, you know, your mileage may vary on that. All right, let's see, here's our, our ranger, I believe. Is this our ranger? Yeah, so it's not going to be very good. I'd rather have him up here so he can use his bow. But that will require me to disengage. Let's go ahead and try that out then. I can disengage and run up there. Now the downside of that though, I can use my hunter's mark on somebody. Oh, that's cool. Uh, the downside of doing that is, 
Did that actually work? There we go. You know, you lose your attack. Alright, just leave him there for now. Just like an XCOM, if you need a certain feat or certain uh, classes, abilities, that will give you advantage if you're up, up above. I don't think he has it, but I'm just kind of in that uh, habit of <laughs> trying. Okay, let's look at uh, our Ingo here. Now, since Peter is there, when I, he's the, there's another melee character attacking this, or within range of the target. So this I should get to use my uh, sneak attack here. Let's try it. Oh, I... You'll die anyway. Now you see, that's what I'm talking about, though. Such a crappy roll, but I get one more shot, since I have uh, two weapons. I'll try to hit him again with my uh, uh, backup weapon. Alright, see, I got it that time, and I got my sneak attack roll. Which is... Uh, where is it? I know it gave me... Yeah, sneak attack, so I got an extra 1d6. Later on, that'll be 2d6. Okay, who? That's all I can do. All right, here's our sorceress. So let's see. She's got some powers she can use. Create spell slot. Create sorcery points. It's kind of interesting. I don't think I want to do that now, though. Um, you know, one question. I think the sleep. I'm pretty sure that does not discriminate between my guys and their guys. I think that just affects everybody in the area. I'm actually not 100% sure if our difficulty level is such that... Matter of fact, we could check that. Let's see if, if by default it gives you... Uh, friendly fire options. Ally... Auto revive, ally saving throw... Image taken around to revive, spell casting, never lose concentration, spell components, you could turn those off. Now I don't see any options here about friendly fire, so I'm going to assume that it does have friendly fire. So you could do burning hands, that might be a good spot. Let's see, can I get them all? You know, I need, if I move back one square, I don't not going to be able to get more than two, but let's just go with this. Try that. Okay. Alright. Got two of them. Not too bad. Now we can either get that attack of opportunity to try to get away. Or I could just stay put. Just stay put. I don't want that. Now what you can do is move a little bit so I'm not getting out of this guy's control completely. But you can do that sort of thing. Just to get a little bit better uh, positioning. Alright, here's our paladin. Now again, he's got some spells he can't use them though because he's got a shield. Might be worth getting rid of that shield at some point. If I'm going to do that, I'm you know, if I had a versatile weapon, that might be the way to do this. And we'll, ex we'll explore that possibility after the battle. Okay, so we just attack this guy. Ooh, critical hit. Let's see, Divine Smite. Peter can smite his target with additional damage by spending a spell slot. You know, he should go down without that, so I'm going to pass and save that. Hunter's Mark. Okay, I think he's just got that one attack, so let's end it there. Alright. Okay, let's switch to our bow. Let's see, why does he have disadvantage? Ranged attack with enemy nearby. Oh, crap, I guess I'm still... I must still be within his... Uh, I'm going to risk an attack of opportunity just to get away. OK. 
Okay. Well, let's see. He's, we could try this. That's a bonus action. Hunter's Mark. Pretty cool. Hunter's Mark receives 1d6 damage when hit by the caster. So I got basically an extra damage roll. It's almost as good as having two attacks. Right, back to our rogue. Now this this cutting action is, is pretty uh, interesting. Let's see if we can try it this time. We're probably going to kill him. I win again. Yeah, he's dead. Now this is kind of uh, one of those questions I was talking about where some of the DMs have different roles for this sort of thing. So my DM says that if you have, even if you have dual weapons and you, you're attacking one target and you kill it with that first blow, he won't let you attack something else with the second blow. He says that's a different attack. Uh, this game apparently does not rule that way. You see, I could use my other dagger to go over there and stab that guy. Even though technically it's a different target. You know, it's just, you know, again, when you're making a game, a computer game, you have to make hard decisions like that sometimes. And uh, who knows if they got it right. Well, let's go ahead and attack. Maybe we'll finish this up. No, no you notice, uh, again, I didn't get sneak attack because you only get that once per round, uh, no matter what. All right. End the turn. Here's Sarah again. Now one cool thing I, I do like about this system is you got, instead of, really you're any spell casters, you'd never really have to give them a bow. Uh, you can if you want to, of course, but they get unlimited cantrips, and some of these actually get better as you level up. So you see like this one, the Acid Splash at caster levels 5, 11, and 17, you actually get an extra die. So it's, you never quit using those cantrips. You could just keep those on all the time. You can even set these uh, to your, when you like the best. And, uh, one last thing is that since I know I'm going to do a long rest immediately after this encounter, I just be crazy with my spells. Just keep, uh, just blow them, blow them, you know. Let me get them all back. Okay, finishing your long rest. Go campfire. A cleric of the Oblivion Domain with peaceful rest will not be surprised in the future. This time was for the purpose of explaining this rule. Okay. <laughs> Whatever that was, I guess there's some ways you can play without ever getting surprised. So again, we can loot all this stuff or we can just leave it for the scavengers. At least that is my understanding. I hope I'm correct. All right, let's uh, take a minute here. So the the great sword, obviously, that is not uh, versatile. I mean, you have to use two hands on it. We got chainmail, leather. Ooh, a bunch more stuff. Get some more of those foods. Light crossbow, leather. Yeah, it'd be nice if they drop more arrows, wouldn't it? So you might wonder: Is any of this stuff magical? As far as I can tell, if it's magical, it's, it has a slightly different name, like it's a magnificent leather or special leather. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But if you're in doubt, you can always do this uh, ritual. Let's see who's got the ritual. Oh, maybe I don't have a ritual. Thought I had a. Oh, this. Yeah, that's right. So we got to get rid of that, and then we can cast a spell. Why doesn't he have the option to do it as a ritual? Can paladins not? Maybe paladins can uh, can't cast spells as a ritual. Hold on, hold the bucket. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Light at last. Hang on. Okay, so that clears that up. Apparently the Paladin cannot cast spells as rituals. Now, see, I did not know that. That is something to consider. I'm pretty sure in some of my tabletop games they let the Paladins do that. 
Okay, but anyway, now you can look at the ground and it would show you if anything's magical. See, like this scroller revivifies magical, so it's got that sort of sparkly action. So just a little something to keep in mind. She's got a light crossbow. Like I say, we could just get rid of that and just stick to cantrips. But, you know, I like to think you never really... Maybe I might fight something eventually where, uh, you know, the magic wouldn't work on. You know, maybe that would be the, the spot where that... Uh, now, wait a minute. She shouldn't be able to wear chain mail, right? I'm pretty sure she can't wear it. Like I say, I'm sorry, but I've never played a uh, sorcerer. So I'm not all sure. Yeah, she can't equip that. Can't equip that. I think you can get some proficiencies and stuff. And use it anyway, but you wouldn't probably wouldn't want to do that. Okay, well. Go back to our rest. And so apparently that was just to, to show me how that rule works. Get some more angry violet. Some Oh, Peter kills a couple of partridges. The party gains five food rations. Okay, we could do that. Understood. Let's try that out. Okay, so I still don't think I got anything worth crafting. You know, the scrolls are more important in this game, I feel, than other games because there is a lot of, there's so few opportunities to rest. And a lot of times you'll be deep in a dungeon somewhere and it's kind of nice to have some scrolls just in case you want to keep casting. You can always make more. Let's see, what was his fighting style? What did I pick for defense? Okay, I don't think I've got any... Anything here that's makes having a shield necessarily worth it. Or the special skills that use the shield. So I might want to get rid of that shield. And use my uh, shield of faith instead. Only trouble is it would use a, a spell slot. But I noticed that you typically have a battle. And then there's if it's a big enough battle you have a chance to rest before the next battle, so. Might be okay. You know, how many battles are you going to get in with that? Are that? <laughs> or you wouldn't have a chance to rest and you'd really need to have that shield. I, I'll carry a shield with me, just in case, you know, I'm out of spell slots. That might be a way around that limitation. And later on, when I start getting some feats, there's not a whole lot of good feats that I found in this game, but. So that's KLM. We're almost there. It's just up the hill. It's a little too quiet, don't you think? We're in the marshes. So quiet, can't be trusted. Quite so. We must be on our guard. I'm pretty sure there's a feat for shields that's pretty cool. Uh, there's also ones if you just want to use the melee weapon one handed, there's a two hander one. It doesn't seem to have all the feats that uh, the player's guide has for the tabletop version. It's got kind of a rather limited selection. I don't know why. Personally, I like a whole crap ton of feats to choose from. I mean, that's a, you know, it's probably kind of tedious to code something like that, but. Oh, what's that smell? Uh oh, in battle. Oh, I just went to cautious mode. Apparently, <laughs> one second too quick. <laughs> yeah, it's got cover systems too. Yay! This is what makes it like XCOM. Okay, uh, inventory utility slot. So again, there's trade-offs. You know, that's the name of the game. You know, the Paladin, for example, it's it's sort of like a cleric. You know, and you get to do some stuff that the cleric can't do, but then again, there's things that the cleric can do that you can't do as a paladin. So there's always that give and take. 
All right, so this would be a good spot to show you how to use the, uh, well, let's see. I'm hidden right now. Okay. So I might just want to stay hidden. What are these little goblins? Now the cunning action works like this. I click cunning action, then I can disengage or dash. And I think, I don't know if this game has it implemented, but in the, in the rules there's an option to use item depending on how you set your rogue up. Let's go ahead and dash and I'll get him to this little cover here. Get him a little bit closer. Go ahead, Ingu. Now see like this for example. He shouldn't be walking slow. Just run, run up there. I get it. <laughs> he, he's stealth. I don't need to literally sit here and wait longer for him to get in position. Okay, now I can ready. And you can ready a... Interesting. Oh, I guess you could throw his daggers. Oh, I didn't think about that. I wonder if you can get him back if you throw it. I don't want to risk it. <laughs> uh, do the... Oh, what the hell? Let's just see what happens. So I guess if an enemy comes up closer, he'll throw a dagger at it. Does that mean I lose the dagger? Uh-oh, so he looks like he lost his uh, stealth. See that he got somewhere there. He must have rolled. Been detected by the goblin. I think I saw like a roll there where he was rolling for stealth. These goblins must be fairly perceptive. Now if I go into the red, I think I'll have to do that roll again for uh, stealth. So let's just see... It'll show you the lines. Yeah, you see those little lines? It's kind of hard to see, but... There's a little white line that shows you what they can see from that position. So there is... It looks like he's got a target there, maybe. Okay, and he gets advantage on it, so let's go ahead and take the shot. Got it. I guess I could have used my Hunter's Mark there, too. Go ahead and put Hunter's Mark on somebody else, or we could just save it. I wonder if this is two per combat, or two between rests. Let's see. Uh, then 24 hours. Per two spell slots over one. Duration from one to eight, then 24 hours. Duration one hour, bonus time. You know, some of these things you get to use every combat, and sometimes it's, uh... Once you have to take a long rest to get it again. Okay, I can tell you what, let's try this ready, just so, again, so you can see what that looks like. Uh, we can set up our cantrip here, say a firebolt, and just say cantrip attack. And that way, if an enemy moves into position, she'll use it. I, I, I love this thing, they had it with Pool of Radiance. They had, I think it's called Guarding. Uh, this gives you a little bit more control, kind of, not as much as Temple of Elemental Evil did, but, you know, it's, it's still kind of nice. You don't just have to throw away your turn. Uh, you can just say, well, if something happens, then we'll do this. You know, it's one of those nice little features that I like to see. So I got that little goblin there. What's the arm? He's armed with a javelin right now. I don't know if I want to use a javelin. I guess we can. No. Oh. Divine Smite. Eh, you want to use that? I just don't think it's necessary to use. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I don't like to waste all my abilities. It's just kind of a habit. I can cast a spell. Yeah, since he doesn't have his uh, shield, we can get this Shield of Faith going. And that's just as, should be just as good as having a shield, but I don't know if that would count as having a shield for some of those shield-based feats and abilities. It's a, I'm just not sure. Oh, there she is. So she, oh! Ten fire. You know, ten points of damage on a cantrip. Holy cow, that's great. 
All right, who are we dealing with here? We've got our rogue. You see, he's still a long ways from the target, but he's already been made, so let's just let's just run up there. Now we can uh, again use our cunning action to dash again. Get up there to him, and now we can attack. But we won't get the sneak attack because uh, we've got no advantage. You'll die anyway. Yeah, it looks like I only get that one attack. Okay. Alright, he's still stealth though. Now see, that's a really good reason to have a high stealth on this ranger. Because he can just keep on getting advantage as long as he's not made. I keep forgetting I even have. I could move him a little closer too. He's going to be a good character. Good job, Gotrick. Of course it's a good character. It's Gotrick! I'm going to go ahead and move her a little closer. Uh, let's see. What do we want to do? I'm kind of curious about these... Look at this again. What was a sorcery point again? Create sorcery points. Spend sorcery points to create a new spell slot. Okay, so what is this? What is... The pool of sorcery points can be used to perform metamagic actions and alter spell effects. Metamagic actions and spell effects. Okay, I'm intrigued. <laughs> Not sure how to activate it, though. Okay, we're still a long ways from the targets. Pretty good range on that catch. Boom, only one point of damage that time. I wonder if I have to charge up the sorcery points to be able to do anything. Yep, concentration. That's a whole other mechanic if you're new to 5e. And so what that means is this spell is only active until if I get distracted or usually wounded, uh, I can do a roll. And if I lose concentration, I lose that spell. You can only have one thing with concentration on at a time. So some of the better spells, you, uh, you kind of have to focus just on that because if you do another spell, you'll lose concentration. Just another little wrinkle. I don't know if it's better. I guess it kind of makes more sense if you were doing something like a hold person. You have to sit there and focus on that. Okay, so I don't know. Did it? Did I lose a javelin? It says I got four javelins. Oh, he didn't throw it. That's right. Just used it to stab with. Is a javelin a... Uh... No, it's not versatile. Now let's switch, see if we can switch to my shield now. Okay. So let's just check this out. So his AC is 19. Aha! Check that out. So you can do your Shield of Faith spell, get the benefit of that, then do your quick slot switch to your sword and shield. Now you got the Shield of Faith and the actual shield. <laughs> now he's got AC 21. Oh yeah, bring it, gobbies. Come here, gobbies. Oh, Peter's got a little something for you. I won't say what it is because it's obvious. The joke is too obvious. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Dash and Shove. Forgot about those. You're not going to shove these guys off. I can get over there, too. Oh, where's Dash? There we go. Dash! You know, another nice thing about Dash, I think, since I, if it, as long as you don't use your reaction, I, I, I think you can still get an attack of opportunity. Yeah, let's see what... Oh, no, did not. No, he disengaged, though. Okay. So if they disengage, you don't get the attack of opportunity. But on the positive side, he doesn't get to attack you either. Otherwise, he could run away and pop you with his... Uh, probably got a short bow, that's my guess. What? He's getting... 
You know what, I didn't like to do in my other games, just switch to a ranged weapon when they're running like this, but... Tell you the truth, this uh, rogue has so much mobility. You can just keep dashing. <laughs> One point of damage. Man, yeah, all that impressed, but maybe it'll run again. I gotta. Maybe this time it won't disengage. Okay. Let's see if we can hit this skirmisher. Boom! Even on a fairly low roll, but you got a, a big bonus on top of that. See? Just rolled a 7. But there's an 8 for my uh, dexterity bonus, proficiency bonus, and that archery fighting style. So I'm really feeling excited about God for Gotrick here. I think he is going to end up being a really powerful character. Let's see, can I hit him? No, too far. Cannot see the target. Okay. So now i got to think about where I can move, where I could actually see the target, and I don't think there'll be a spot. You know, I could hide again. You know, if you get out of the line of sight, you could try to hide or stealth again. It's not a once per game. You know, some of these games, you only get to stealth until you're spotted, and then that's it. Uh, with this game, if you play it right, if that's your place, there's, if that's your preferred style, there's, there are ways to get back into uh, hiding. All right, Peter, can you reach him? Yeah, that's a pretty good bit of movement on Peter there. Divine Smite. I don't think that'll be necessary. You know, Peter's like, let me use the Smite! Let me use the Smite! <laughs> Victory! All right, man. Okay, yeah, short rest. Anybody actually get damaged? Okay, you guys talking? Uh, let's see. The only thing I don't like about this game is I'm not crazy about this loot system. You know, as far as finding items on the ground, I... You know, personally, I don't need to see shit on the ground. Excuse my language. Uh, these little bags. I'm okay with just having a screen pop up and say, here's all the loot. You know, Pool of Radiance did it like that. What? What was wrong with it? What was so bad about the way Pool of Radiance did it? Hey, battle's over. Here's a picture of some treasure. Here's a, here's a, a list. <laughs> you just go through the list, pick out what you want. It's great. I don't gain anything by having to run over to a bag and run over here to another bag and, and all that crap. I, I'm not going to make a mountain of, out of a molehill, but you know, it's just when a game is so good, you're just like, come on. You don't just have to imitate stuff that's been done before. Even WoW has that, like, auto-loot button. Okay. So he's still got that Shield of Faith. I wonder how long that lasts. Uh, where is it? Ten minutes. He's got eight minutes left. So that's a decent amount of time. You know, in game terms... I guess it's in real time, so you don't want to just sit around. Uh, so if I do the short rest, I'll lose that. But let me just do it so you can see what they're talking about. Uh, so this is just an hour break. And what it lets you do is heal your characters up automatically. So again, this is one of those things that I think D&D &D does so that you don't have to have a healer. If you just have a group, maybe you don't want to have a healer in your group, or maybe nobody wants to play a cleric or a healing class or whatever. Hey, it's not that big a deal. They put stuff in here like these short rests. Uh, so what this lets you do, every character, depending on their class, basically how many uh, hit, hit points they have uh, with their class, the more uh, tanky kind of classes get more of these. So you get so many of these, and again, the higher level you are, the more that you get. Uh, but I could roll this. And he's back to full health. You know, if he hit, he could roll like a one and a one, <laughs> like crappy rolls. So it's not perfect in that sense, but it's just a way to heal without having to use potions or 
you know, spells or taking a long rest. You know, it's just or having to have a dedicated healer. So I like that. You know, I think it's a great idea. They have a lot of great ideas here, in my opinion. Okay, there's another chest. Yeah, there's no party inventory either. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> it's nice when you just have that party inventory you can drag stuff into. I guess I didn't want to do that. So what did I pick up there? Is that not the same? Yeah, reorder. You do have a reorder button. Cool. Okay, let's keep on going. Now, I kind of like that idea of starting off with a javelin. Just so, uh, you know, if I have the javelin, I could throw it if I had to. And I can also have a hand free if I need to cast a spell. And I can always switch back to the sword and shield combo in once I get into battle if I want to. I have a bad feeling about this. Where's the garrison? Dead or run away? Look! That tower! That's insane! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I wonder if that started off as like a big graphical glitch. And he's like, oh, let's just keep it. Use it. Anyway, we have a mission. Excuse me, sir. Let's we put a tower on sideways. Shh. Leave it. It's cool. I think I could come up with a storyline for that. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. Uh, I guess we're going to be jumping all around trying to get these chests. I know kids that do that faster. Uh, something happened. Oh, he lost a shield of faith. Oh, of course he took a short rest. Uh, da -da, got a gem, another shield. Let's see. Double click an item to auto loot. Arrows. Oh, yeah, we need some more arrows, don't we? And what's this? Sh another shield. I don't think I've got any other characters that could use a shield. I'm going to just leave it. You know, one of the nice things is you don't have to carry stuff, you just drop it. I'm going to just leave it. And you know, one of the nice things is you don't have to carry stuff. You just drop going back and forth to town. What do you think? Oh, typical Manicalan architecture. The stone cutting is textbook. Using this orange stone from the mountain. That's it. Orange stone. I won't dignify <laughs> that question with an answer. Yeah, later on there'll be some little roll every now and then to see if you know anything about it or you have a good history roll or religion check. And if you if you roll poorly, you might just get a oh, it's a chest or it's a it's a painting, <laughs> it's a person in a painting. Uh, whereas if you have a good, you know, let's just say religion, or you might recognize that as oh that's Father Ignatius, blah blah blah. Yeah, just kind of fun stuff. Sometimes it gives you good clues. Sometimes it's just for flavor. Oh, it's like I picked up a war hammer. You know, I think it's good to have a hammer uh, on my paladin. Because if it's a skeleton, I'm probably spoiling it a little bit here, but if you're fighting skeletons, they're uh, vulnerable to... Uh, blunt weapons so you basically do more damage you know with smashing smashing them with a hammer than you would trying to stab them it doesn't work for every undead but uh there's definitely been fighting here why did we take this job again oh yeah these lovely council badges this is no time for jokes right whoever did this could still be around don't want them hearing us. 
We should look for survivors. Fifty people can't just vanish. Did you see that? Someone's hiding inside the tower. It's a trap. The goblins killed everyone, and now it's our turn. Or they're the survivors, and they're being cautious. We need to get up to that door. If they slaughtered the garrison, they'll pay. Back off! No closer! Who's there? We're not letting you in! And we're not coming out! We fought in that He's general Captain direction! Henrik there. We need to talk to him. <clears throat> Don't you dare speak his name, you filthy bastard! Don't talk to them! They'll cast a spell on you! Don't touch me! Lost their minds, a lot of them. Let's get to the door. Maybe if they can see us up close, we can show them our council badges. <laughs> yep, that always works. Here's a good chance to try out that roll. So let's see if they can recognize what this thing is. Okay. What's this? I believe this was called a minor imperial gate. Yeah, there we go. Oh, 20! At its height, the Manakalan Empire had countless gates like this to magically travel through the Empire. I don't suppose it still works. Some say there are still functioning gates. And this plaque? Any value? Maybe. The Tower of Knowledge? Why not? So she rolled such a high check on her uh, arcane, I think it was. Oh, they even got XP for that, so that was pretty cool. Okay. No path to destination, so we need to uh, play around with these crates. I think they I like these. The I think they kind of like these crates a little too much. I like having to knock, push rocks over, and move crates around to try to get to spots. It's, it's okay. All right. I don't know if I need quite so much of it. Oh, got another battle. What are these things? It's like flying creatures, unknown creatures. Okay, so this would be a good chance, I think, to use my... Uh, uh, probably can't hide from them. I wonder if I move there if I could hide. Yeah, let's just try it. Just see. Oh, but I can't ready my actions anymore. Yeah. It's okay, we'll just uh end the turn. Still learning. Right, those are probably too far away. Let's see. Could do a cantrip. Could try to make him go to sleep. I could do my armor. Let's go ahead and put my armor on. Probably the best move. Okay, just can't reach that. I guess we'll get as close as we can, maybe. They're probably going to attack her. Let's see, six. But since I've got my mage armor on, I should be harder to hit. Okay, oh. Okay, good. So I can still use this just fine. I think this time I'll use my Hunter's Mark. Is that automatic? No. Cast spell. Okay, I don't think that applies to anybody but me, though. Is that okay? Maybe I'll... I think you'll get an attack of opportunity if I try that. I don't know. I guess not. It must be up above me. Okay, leave him there. Oh, that's a hit. Ooh, yikes! Got some poison damage. I think, thankfully, though, in this game, poison is just a one-off deal. 
I don't think it stacks. Or I don't think it's a dot damage over time ability. At least not the basic poisons I've tried. Okay, let's think about this. Look at his bonus actions. He can do these without penalty. Let's go ahead and get the divine favor. Oh, it's concentration. Or I could do that whole shield business again. So I guess it's a choice. Do you want to do extra damage? Let's just try it out and see. See if that's a better option. Okay, we'll switch back to our short sword and shield combo and attack. Alright, so you got another 1d4 damage from that divine favor. Pretty cool! <laughs> man, can you tell that? Who wouldn't want to play this? Give me a break, man. Come on. <laughs> this is fun. Alright, I'm going to put him there so he gets a little bit of cover. Oh, we got another one. Bring him on. Oh, another one. Okay, you can stop bringing him on now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think you're hidden anymore, buddy. You know, I wish it would tell you if you get a sneak attack or not. Now, see, this poison is great. I don't know if these things would even... Since they use poison, sometimes that means they're not... You can't poison them, but... You know, let's just try it and see. This will probably use up my whole action. Now I can still attack with the other one. Not too bad. What, did I do poison damage? Sneak attack. Oh, I, got, I did get my sneak attack. I guess because he's within melee range. I thought they actually had to have a melee weapon, but apparently not. But I don't think that was the dagger that had the uh, poison on it, right? Wait, what the hell just happened? <laughs> oh, I got my sneak attack. Okay. Three piercing. Nominal damage output. Okay. Did I roll a crit? Oh, I rolled a crit! Duh! Oh, that was a great roll there for uh, Ingo. Okay, we're back to her again. Let's see. Could burning hands? Can't tell. I don't think that's going to get him. Kind of hard to see that, isn't it? Let's try the... Uh, what does this do? 1-8 of some kind of damage. 1-D-8? Ooh, 1-D-10 sounds like a better deal than me. The acid splash, you have to have them right next to each other for that to work. I thought you could fight! Hmm. Crummy roll. Missed. Okay, back to our ranger. Let's try the... Does, does he stop? Which one has the mark on it? This one. Okay, let's try to hit that one. Got him! Boom! You can select a new target for Hunter's Mark. Oh, so I don't have to keep using spell slots on it. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? So I can just keep moving that mark around? Well, that's going to be great. Oh, if he can sur <laughs> if he survives. <laughs> Piercing poison. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. I might need to actually heal this guy. Yeah, let's try the heal. I don't think he's still poisoned, right? How many points? How many points? Okay, I guess 10. I didn't realize it would give you that much control over that. Yeah, they're going to kill uh, Ingo there, I think. 
But you know, some of the battles get so tough, you really do have to think about, I can kind of wedge myself in a corner so I only have to fight a couple at a time instead of being completely surrounded. Uh, looks like you can't climb up on top of those crates. What is the young gnome to do? I guess we can wait till they come to me. I guess I could have thrown the dagger. Just keep trying this. You know, that's why even if it's a mage, having a good dexterity is great because so many spells do use dex. You see that? Where somewhere there's a. Oh, is it charisma? And am I giving you the wrong information? Range tip 24. She rolls a 15 and a 5. So I guess it is the charisma. Alright, so I stand corrected. Forget what I just said. <laughs> so they only use the, uh, the charisma score for hit and damage, I suppose. Alright, this one's got the hunter's mark on it. <clears throat> you have them now. And that eight's a dex, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna be pretty much unstoppable, I feel like, with that. If they don't take him out. But he's got pretty good AC, because I think he can wear pretty good armor. Kind of a powerhouse. Alright, so that guy's not going to come down. Let me just try throwing a javelin. Cannot reach the target. What, I can't just throw it? How do you throw? There we go. Let's just see if I lose the javelin if I do this. One less enemy. Let's just see if I can recover that javelin or is it gone permanently? That's a good question. Nope, got it back. Cool. Now, I might not always come back, but still pretty good to know. At least there's a chance you can recover it. Same thing with arrows. Let's see, what else do I want to do here? Kind of make sure you, you know, another kind of irritant, irritating thing to me is you can only have 20 arrows loaded. You know, I would prefer it if you just could have, uh, you know, 100 or 40. I guess they want you to only be able to carry so many. Go a little bit further here and then I'll switch to my other other group. About an hour end of these guys, I think. I want to fight one good battle. Tutorial, camera elevation. Hmm. That must have been tricky coding that bit in. Stop. Whoa, whoa, stop! <laughs> Yep. See, they're using their jumps there. Some characters have, uh, trying to make a big long jump, you have to roll, I believe. I was I thinking I'll make that. Okay. They're here. You damn Sorax. Sorax? Did they say Sorax? Oh, they spotted it. We're shapeshifters from another world. Guess we'll have to all go home now. You bastards took the captain, but you won't take us. Don't talk to them. See, insight roll. So that'll give us a better... Ooh, look at this persuasion. So this is the paladin. It's a real good success rate with these uh, special uh, op, uh, dialogues. We're deputies of the council. Sent by Protector Lyra Keen. Uh, and got it with a critical. They do have council badges. Sure, of course they do. 
looted from whose corpse? Open the damn door. There are only four of them. No! I said no! And we're in. New waypoint, Adam. Thank you for letting us in. Don't take me. Are you in charge here? Lieutenant Beryl Stonebeard. Second in command. After Captain Henrik. You thought we were Sorax? So you really believed you were attacked by Sorax? Men-sized lizards who speak? Oh yeah. They're real. But we found no corpses. Nothing. We know. They took all the bodies. Ours and theirs. So no one can prove they exist. Uh, that's garbage. Of course they did. Just to make you look crazy. You won't laugh when they come back. We got here without trouble. Then they let you in. And now you're trapped with us. Why would they do that? How should I know? They're Sorax. Uh, might we have a little chat? Sorax. Comrades in arms. As long a little as bit of try a anything clever. body snatchers vibe Good. to this. Okie dokie. Get to go talk to people. Never the most fun thing. There's a chest down there. Always go for the chest first. Sometimes that'll just initiate a combat right away and you won't even have to talk. Unidentified potions and stuff. That's going to be a problem because I don't think I have identify. I don't think I've got identify magic on any of these guys. Heavy cross. But let's just take it all. Now let's see. A heavy crossbow. That does one. I'm just kind of curious if this might be a better option for my... Uh, He's got a longbow, does 1-8 damage, 30 range. This does 110 damage instead, and it's got so a little bit shorter range. But you can do more damage. And it uses a totally different kind of ammo, so it's probably not worth the, the hassle. I might give it to my, uh, I think my paladin might be able to use that for a What was that? A scroll of cure wounds. Uh, the short sword, I think, is probably better than a dagger. Go ahead and swap that out. Since that that is a light weapon, so he can use that. Right, pretty to go. Hey there. Hi. Name's Rubar Sharp. So you're the Shop. old sweat of the shop. Group. Yeah. But I'm not in charge, mind you. What do you think of Daniat? Never liked him. He's hiding something. He's been nervous since we came back from the Badlands. But it'd be no good picking a fight with him now. I understand. So we're just trying to figure out what's the truth of this? The Sorax and who might be a Sorax or Clearly not. treachery? Look around. Losing the captain. How about Lizbeth? Lizbeth? Good woman. Strong. There's something great. wrong with just calling a character Elizabeth. <laughs> this has got to be like Lisbeth or Lizbeth or Lizbeth. So what do you think we should do? For starters, not waiting here for the Sorax to come back and off us. But Stonebeard says stay. And she's an officer, so... Yeah, she's a stubborn one. And mutiny's a bad look on a soldier. Yeah, it's kind of a you bad look. Her? Deputy of the council. Slightly bad luck. So if we find a way, you're with us? I'm with myself. But don't let that stop you. Alright. Okay, so I guess I gotta go talk to Lizbeth. Now it's my turn, right? What do you mean? 
What is this? A murder investigation? <laughs> Should it be? <laughs> Should we be investigating? Maybe. Speak up then. Well, let's say this all happened after a certain expedition. Spit it out. The scouts. They came back from a raid into the Badlands, found a ruin, came back with loot. The next day, this happens. Coincidence? You tell me. Only one of them's still alive. Hmm. Daliant. Curious. You know, certainly an art <coughs> and good dialogues and options. The options to be different. You also want each one to be unpredictable. Okay, get some more crossbows. Scale mail. What does he have? Chain mail. It's AC set to 16. This is AC set to 14. Looks like we got another longbow, too. Ah, do I need the longbow? <clears throat> Pretty sure he can't use it. Yeah, he can't use that. Could he use that armor? Medium armor. Let's just see. I don't think he can use it. Well, I guess he can. However, the fact that it has stealth disadvantage probably makes it a not a good choice. What's our um, ranger wearing scale already? Let's just get rid of that. Lock that around. Long bow. Okay. <clears throat> So who are you, friend? Daliat Sunburn, a scout. Do you believe they were Sorax? Don't know. They seemed real, though. What do you think they wanted? To kill us all. Not big on talk, huh? I'm having a pretty bad day. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna rest now. Man, I think that's that. Is it me, or didn't he like that last question? Something's happening. It's clear that something must be done. The Sorax are real? It's a lot to take in. We have enough to make our report to the Council, so let's get going. If we don't help them, they'll either die or kill each other. Let them. <laughs> Could be fun to watch. So everyone has an opinion, but what are we going to do? And what about Daliat? We've got some pretty worrying hints about him. What if he really is hiding something important? Let's confront him. We need to talk to him and find out the truth. I'm going to go back and talk to him again. I'm going to check something real quick. So she is a draconic bloodline. And what did that do for us? An affinity to a specific damage type. So what does that mean exactly? Does she do extra damage if it's uh, fire based, is my guess? Can we talk? What now? You should step down. Yeah, why would I say that? <laughs> Sorry, will you do that? Uh, I guess we have to try to figure out who we want to accuse. Blah, 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 blah. They do reuse these uh, levels quite a bit. A lot of, especially if you do the side quests, it just keeps sending them back to the same places over and over again. We need to talk. Which is fine with me. It doesn't bother me. You don't have to do them. You know, they are side quests. About this trip into the Badlands. That's what we do here. The Sorax attacked after you came back. So what? I brought them here? Did you bring something back? We always do. Like the scavengers. Ask Sharp. Mm -hmm. He has tons of things brought back from there. But maybe this time you took something special. <laughs> it's nothing of value to Sorax. How would you know? There we go. Insight roll. 
Well, we can try to persuade him. Save us a little time if this works, I bet. Trust us. We're all on the same side here. Oh, got it. It's just an old book. Might be of historical value. Take it then, and find a way to get us out of here. Hey, what's that? Uh, hey! Oh, here we go. This probably be a good final battle for us. I'll switch over and you can see the level fives. But I gotta say, it's, it's a lot of fun even playing these guys. I mean, they've already got some pretty interesting options. Let's see, what am I dealing with? Just the one? Okay, how do I want to slice this apple? I guess I'm out of spells. What did he have for powers? Reveals celestial fiends and undead. That doesn't sound all that useful for this. I think we should just run over and smack him. Slashing damage. Sustains damage. Okay. Now for him, he can't reach him. So, I'm always a little bit confused about this cunning action. You can take a bonus action on each of your turns in combat. Oh, I see. So that's why I can't attack twice. Because one of those is considered a bonus action. And I should be able to attack once with that. So cunning action, dash, yes. Boom, and he did get a sneak attack. So that's how you do that. Good to know. Yeah, I want to see something about her too. So if she does a... That does fire damage, right? Yeah, fire damage. Let's see if that does any bonus sort of fire damage. Oh, she missed. It says cover. Is he covered? Somehow he's got partial cover. I wonder if somebody's standing in front of him, maybe. Maybe that's how she was doing so much damage a while ago. You know, that, that Dragonborn thing. Maybe that gives her a big uh, booster or fire damage. Uh, yeah, go ahead and target that thing. I think it would give you that option right off the bat. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. What the hell? He used Shadow Escape. Oh, well maybe I could use my power now. Can do anything? Maybe these things aren't... What was it? Fiends? Okay, I guess he's used his turn then. What's going on here? I guess I'll just uh, ready an attack. Okay, let's try this again. Cast. Firebolt. Let's see if she gets some kind of bonus to her damage. Perhaps. Nominal. Sustains damage. Okay, I guess so. Nominal damage output 2. So she rolled a firebolt. Lucky perhaps. What did she roll though? Maybe that just means that no matter what I roll, I get at least a, two points of damage on it. Still trying to figure out that little bit. Okay, if he hits, that should take care of that one. Boom. However, victory. Wait a minute, aren't there two more hanging around though? Robot, no! I'm sorry. 
This is all your fault. Don't you think it's time to stop bickering? Oh, maybe they hit, hit and ran. Don't be fooled. The Sorax are responsible, and many others will fall if we don't report to the council. You people, just leave me alone. Uh oh. He came from here. Look. What's this? A secret passage? From Imperial times. That was just a scout. More will be coming. They're here. They're coming back outside. Uh -oh. We need to go. Take your stuff into the secret passage before it's too late. All right, so that gives you a pretty good, pretty good look. I think of the early parts of the game. I'll uh, park these characters here, I think, and then we can switch over and I'll show you some of the later characters. All right, let's get these guys loaded in. Let's see, where's my other campaigns? There's some way to resume playing. Okay, let's see, one fourth. Where is my other save game? that group oh crap no that's not oh man I hope I didn't record over my my old game that would be terrible Loading with anticipation. No, that's that group there. Okay, this is starting to get a little bit concerning. Stopping autosave. Care them. You know, if it recorded over all my autosaves. Let's try that. Man, if I lost my level 5 party, I'm going to be upset. That's pretty far along. Let's see. It might... Could be that I should have saved that to its own file. Oh, but I hope that's not the case, man. That'd be a terrible. Yeah, here's my old party. Oh, but this is like right at the beginning. Oh my god. Oh. oh. No. Oh man, I think it did record. I think it recorded over my level 5 party. Oh, that's terrible. I guess I won't be able to show you the later game because there is no later game. <laughs> oh man, alive, tell me that ain't so. That's these guys. All right, I'm just going to completely quit out of this and reload. Maybe it's... New adventure. Load a game. Yeah, these are all from today. The only thing that's not is this... This one file I recorded back... On the 29th, looks like when I was just getting started. Oh, God, that is awful. What about my... 
All these are level ones. Oh man. This is truly terrible. I wonder if there's is there some way I can recover it from my steam cloud or something? Yeah, I guess I should have uh, saved that, that other game as a separate thing, not just the autosave. Another previously saved game. Oh, that is just awful. <laughs> yeah, see, I started the new game there, but I guess it just... Uh... Okay, I mean, that's them's the breaks, I suppose. Well, I can show you the these characters. I might do a little research. Maybe there's some way I can dig into the Steam Cloud save games or something. <clears throat> yes, but it does sadly, sadly appear that I've just wiped out my party. And that was, God, probably a good 20, 30 hours into the game. Yeah, these guys are only uh, level ones. <laughs> Just uh, kind of having shock right now. I'm kind of in shock over this. Well, uh, I don't know what else to try. I'm going to stop. See if I'm going to do a little research, see if there's anything I could possibly do about this. All right. All right, folks. Well, it pains me to say this, but it does appear that I've just completely. <laughs> eradicated my previous game and I had oh I don't know why don't we see how many hours I put into that 24 hours uh, <laughs> including I guess the time I spent today so yeah that sucks um, clearly I should have before I started the new games loaded up the old one saved it as a dedicated file like this I did it you know just starting out but it just didn't occur to me that that was something I needed to do. You know, some games will keep a campaign separate. Just, I'm still kind of uh, in shock over that. I know you guys probably know how that feels. <laughs> when you lose something you've just put so many hours into, it really sucks. Uh, I guess it recorded over all those save games. You know, it's, uh, I'm not going to blame uh, Tactical Adventures for this. I could have, uh, you know, taken some precautions. But wow. <laughs> it's just, you know, even the characters weren't saved. I mean, that, this is just a total fail. You know, I don't know what else I can say. Just, uh, it's terrible. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. What what can you do? No need to cry about it. <laughs> I might cry about this because I was having such a good time with my, with my characters and my party that I created. Just absolutely, it just stinks. Oh, God, you know, I wish they, they had made it so that your quick saves and auto saves from different parties didn't, uh, or different campaigns didn't record over each other. Just kind of stupefied by this. You can see I had a had now <laughs> a fighter and a rogue and a cleric and a wizard. This this was a really good team. It was working out well. I'm just trying to think what else I could tell you. I'm just going to quit harping on this and just, I guess I'll just wrap up my video. I was going to play a couple hours uh, on my party that no longer exists. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there's a lot to, to like about this game. Obviously, if you were playing this yourself and not making a video, you probably wouldn't have different campaigns going. Uh, but I really like the crafting system. I love the minutia. You know, once these guys start to get higher levels, I guess we could at least look at that maybe. You know, I don't know if it'll let me look at it necessarily from here, but uh, 
You, know, you get like multiple attacks, you get some feats you can uh, select from, or you can do ability score improvements. You can, um, of course, learn new spells, and those are all well implemented. I was actually was very impressed with the, the way everything is implemented here. <laughs> you know, I'm trying not to get so bitter about the Lost Party to let that taint my review, because, uh, you know, putting that aside... I really enjoyed the... Let me just go back to this game before I just... Uh, let's see, where's the latest save? <laughs> let's go back to this. <laughs> you know, uh, do I like it enough? Let me... Yeah, that's a good question. Do I like it enough to actually replay all of the content, you know, again? You know, maybe... You know, once the shock wears off, I might go back and, and try that again. It's certainly painful. It's certainly... Uh, as an impact, um, you know, I guess I might be willing to do that. I feel like I probably would, you know, because I did, I did like this so much. I don't know what else I would rather play. You know, I'm pretty sure I could grind through this, uh, the content fairly quickly now that I know what I'm doing and like the answers to the puzzles and everything. So it might not ta even take that long uh, to get back to where I was. But man, there was a lot of really tight battles in there. <laughs> You know, some, some, some stuff that I had to play through several times to get past it. Uh, but anyway, let's just, if I, can, if I can somehow get out of that mindset. Uh, graphics, awesome. I really impressed what they did with all the levels. Uh, the quest design is nice. I mean, you do go back a few times to previous levels and, you know, basically do the, the quests over again. There'll be some new monsters there for you to fight. It doesn't bother me. I think it's actually nice to recycle some of those assets. Uh, for future quests, and you know, it's perfectly fine with that. Uh, I really liked how the game evolves as you play and you learn new skills and new feats and you get some new tricks. <laughs> the change, uh, not just, it's not like the old days where you level up, you get some new hit points and that's it. I mean, now you get all sorts of uh, things that actually change the way you play, uh, help you start developing some new strategies and tactics. Uh, the, the, everything else is great. I mean, it's I don't know if you're expecting, like, uh, the latest AAA, <laughs> you know, uh, game in terms of graphics. I mean, obviously, it's not going to compare to that. But uh, I think everything is quite nice. I like the music and the uh, the graphics all the way through. The voice acting, good. Uh, I was actually okay with the story. I mean, some people knock it. Uh, again, I don't care about that stuff. It works for me. I was excited to see what happened uh, later. Lots of uh, good battles, good villains and things. Uh, I like the... Interactions, you know, when you have those those little conversations and you click on the different party members. Crafting system's good. You know, uh, nothing not to like there. Um, but probably my main thing that I enjoyed about this game was just the, the battles they had set up there. You get to really use a lot of good tactics and strategies and as you're leveling up your characters and getting better uh, items, it's, it's really making a difference, just like with, with the tabletop version. Uh, I think this is probably the... I don't even know what else is out there that tries to use um, some version of uh, the 5th edition. There's probably something obvious I'm blanking out on at the moment. Uh, but I'm certainly more used to that Pathfinder system. So this was a nice departure from that, especially if you're playing 5th uh, edition in, on ta in a tabletop game somewhere. And I uh, want to see that in the form of a computer game. You know, here it is. Um, let's see, what else would there be to uh, talk about? You know, that's probably about it. You know, it's just these uh, really good tactical combat, turn-based. You know, I don't know what else you could ask for. <laughs> uh, it's got the all the mechanics you remember, whether you like them or not, I guess. Uh, they're here uh, from that 5th edition. And there's, there's probably something that they, that's missing that I'm not uh, aware of. But, you know, holy cow, I just think this is a great game. It's, it's really, I'm really torn up about the, the Lost Party. I uh, wish that hadn't happened because I feel like that tainted my whole experience quite a bit. But uh, you know, <laughs> don't let that happen to you. Let just let this be a lesson to you. If you decide you want to make a new adventure, just make sure you go in here and save the game. You know, put it under something new. You know, I even did it here. Like the stop, I should have had like a stopping here game. That would have been fine. You know, I just felt like. I thought I had done that, to be honest with you, and also thought that between the save and the cloud saves and being able to restore previous versions and <laughs> all that, that there would be a way to recover it. I mean, it's just stupefying. 
Yeah, I think even in here there's like quick save. Uh, like you can even uh, change the number of auto saves and quick saves. So I probably played this just long enough to record over record over all of my quick saves. You know, how can that be? <laughs> you know, I re I hit quick save five times. Quick save four. Let's just double check these. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be a miracle if one of these was was in the right place? Uh, this is I'm loading this. I do hope to get these guys on. Maybe if they see my pain here, uh, they will fix this. It's probably not even that complicated of a thing to fix. That's that was what save game. Uh, so that was quick save. Is this quick save five? Let's try. I'm not even. Wow, these are like real close together too. Two twenty. I must have just had a habit and been just pushing that button a lot. Yeah. So there's just no way. Yeah. There's no way these are. Uh, you think the auto saves? I guess it auto saves a lot too. Yeah. All of these are from one fourth, so it had to be one from. Uh, yesterday for me to get it back okay well enough of that I will have to ding at a point I guess uh, for that that's a pretty terrible thing you know just for trying to make a review video <laughs> and to and to lose that I, you know I can't believe it even took my characters and set them back at level one too I, I don't know what's up with that uh, but anyway that aside uh, go ahead pick up the game I think you'll really be happy with it uh, I know I was <laughs> up into the catastrophe, but you know, that, you know, forget it. There's so much to like about this game. It's it's a lot of fun, especially if you're a big fan of XCOM style combat and you were curious, like what would it be like to play uh, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition rule set with that sort of XCOM emphasis on the tactics and really fun battles. And uh, you know, I don't have a problem with the story of the characters. I think it's it's perfectly fine. I was uh, quite happy with the game. Uh, but anyway, I'll stop it here. You know, sorry to be ranting about that save game <laughs> so much. <laughs> you guys, I'm sure you know what it's like. It's just, it, it almost feels like I've lost a pet. Uh, you know, it's just that level of uh, pain here. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to stop. Hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> and I'll uh, see you next time. That's all for this uh, month's episode, week's episode, and year's episode. <laughs> I don't know when you'll be watching this, but uh, that's it for this one. Uh, I do want to uh, do a quick shout-out. Actually, a couple of shout-outs here. One is you might have noticed this uh, rather excellent shirt. I mean, check out this pattern on this. I don't know how well you're able to see this, but this is a design by, of course, Knox Archaist. Uh, so I'll put a link in the show if you want to see if you can get a... Uh, your own copy, is it a copy of a shirt? That doesn't sound right. Uh, <laughs> your, your own uh, shirt? Man, my brain is just not with it today. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, if you want one of these, you can follow the link in the show notes. And, you know, by the way, thank you to Knox for sending me this. Uh, it's really awesome. Bada boom. I uh, also want to, uh, oh, well, of course, uh, uh, thank you very, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you with a maximum of gratitude, with <laughs> extreme thankfulness, with critical roles of 20 uh, for supporting this show, guys. It uh, really means a lot to me. You're keeping, the, I mean, it's still on the after all these years. I'm actually getting very close now. What, uh, 21 episodes left until the great 500? So, man, I couldn't have done that without you so thank you so much uh got a couple of new rats here in the pack go ahead and give them a shout out to another matt could never have too many of those guys around we've got uh new england clam chode interesting uh <laughs> uh frong uh shattered sin justin mike and daniel uh, so thank you very much, guys, for supporting the show. Again, could not, would not do it without you. If, for whatever reason, 
You have not stepped up to the plate, young man or woman. <laughs> what are you thinking? Go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site, and you too can become a rat in the Rat Chat Army. Whew. Yeah, actually, uh, in all seriousness, I, I hear this all the time. People that, you know, you might like something, uh, enjoy watching a show or whatever, but uh, when you really just step up, even if it's for a dollar, you know, two bucks, whatever you can afford, just doing that little bit really kind of makes you feel like you're connected to it. It kind of, it's like more than just a, uh, you know, ent entertainment at that point. It's almost like you're part of this this community. You know, it's just a different relationship you have to something when, when you actively support it like that. So, uh you know, I'm just saying, you get something out of this deal, too. Uh, not to mention the awesome Discord channel we have going. Uh, okay, what about that news from the Matt Key? Oh. All right, got some news. Uh, this is on Indie Retro Games. Unofficial extension and remake to a great Amiga RPG gets a release. So you might have heard of a game called Amber Moon. You know, I get requests to do this all the time. But I don't know if it was on other platforms or not. And it was on the Amigas where I heard about it. There might be other versions that I'm just not aware of. Uh, anyway, they've done, uh, that's kind of been on the, they've, you know, various people have uh, updated that game, done various fixes to it and so on and so forth. Uh, this is a release that's not just a PC remake of Amber Moon, but it is, within it is an advanced mod for Amber Moon, which features new content. And uh, I think it's got an editor. Did I read that? I think I saw that. <laughs> and somehow I lost part of my note here. Uh, but anyway, that, that looks really cool. Unofficial extension to Amber Moon. You can play that on the PC now. It says, uh, this is on Indie Retro Games. They say, rest assured, if you love RPGs, you'll love playing Ember Moon on your home computer. You know what the heck? I might cover that one. Uh, you know, that might be a fun match chat. I haven't done Ember Moon. Uh, so maybe be, uh, this might be my chance to play that very easily without <laughs> having to worry about uh, setting up a, an Amiga emulator or anything like that. So anyway, keep an eye on it. I'll post a link to it. Now, Polygon's Charlie Hall uh, posted about the Dark Souls tabletop role-playing game. So if you ever played Dark Souls and thought, man, I'd like to play this on the tabletop, well, your wishes might come true very soon thanks to Steam Forged. Now, unfortunately, there's zero information about this game other than a teaser trailer, so who knows anything? Uh, but, you know, something to keep an eye on. I know a lot of people uh, enjoy Dark Souls. I'm not sure how this would transition. Because <laughs> isn't like the whole focus of that game on like, uh, you know, basically being really good with the controller and fast reflexes? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, and then finally, PC Games In wrote in about this. And I think this took me a while to figure out what was going on here. But uh, Skyrim, there's a module for Skyrim that's been around for a while. It's called Requiem, or I think it's called like the Great RPG Overhaul. Uh, and I believe, and again, I'm just this is what I was able to surmise uh, from a few <laughs> for a few minutes of research, is that um, what that did was de-level the game and a bunch of other stuff, but that was probably the main thing. So in the old uh, Skyrim, you know, everything's kind of wraps around your character. Your character's kind of uh, uh, the center of attention. You go anywhere you want, and the level scales, I guess, according to uh, or the monsters and everything. Uh, scale to whatever your level, whatever level your character currently is at the moment. Uh, so what this module did uh, was change that, make it more old school. So now, yeah, you can't just uh, go anywhere you want. Uh, the different areas have different levels. Uh, you know, basically the <laughs> time-tested formula, right? Uh, but to get to that, it wasn't as simple as it sounds. You know, they actually had to go in and make quite a few changes to make that happen. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff they've done as well as that, but I think that's the main uh, focus here. Uh, so this, what the news is, is that that module is now available for Skyrim Special Edition. Apparently very easy to get up and running. A lot of people are talking about it. So uh, if you like the Skyrim game and you haven't played it in a while and you're thinking, you know, I'd probably play that again with a fresh uh, module or, <laughs> you know, if they could change, you know, if it's a different enough experience to where it might be worth uh, revisiting the game. You know, I think this is it. 
you know, this might be well worth uh, going back playing Skyrim. You know, <laughs> as you guys know, that was my big complaint about Skyrim. I'm kind of, I'm kind of actually famous or infamous, uh, like one of the, the one dude uh, who was critical of Skyrim back when that came out. <laughs> but my main criticism was exactly this, you know. Like, I remember you're, you're playing, you're like level one and you're killing a dragon. I'm like, you don't kill a dragon at level one. You, you kill little rats. I mean, you're killing rats and then you get to like level you know, two or three <laughs> and then you kill bigger rats you know it's just it's like, there's a lot of stuff in between you and the dragon uh, you know it's just kind of it kind of bugs me <laughs> so, so maybe these uh, developers are like well oh hell matt here you go play requiem you'll get your butt kicked by the dragon <laughs> thank you for kicking my butt man okay uh, let's wrap it up with a quote <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking for quotes. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm almost sort of wondering. I'm, I'm kind of uh, wondering if I should even release this video because I feel so bad about that save game thing, and I and I hope that that doesn't make people not want to buy the game or support these developers because it's a really good game. Uh, even, just because I got frustrated by this doesn't mean anything. You know, I think you'll still enjoy it very much yourself. Uh, but anyway. The reason I mentioned that is because I was looking for quotes about frustration and dealing with frustration and that sort of thing. And, of course, there are many. Apparently, there are many frustrated people in this world. But there's also a great many fun quotes about it. Man, and listen to this. This is Algis Huxley. Uh, didn't he do a... Uh, I always get him confused. There's a couple different Huxleys. Uh, one did Brave New World. I can't remember what the other one did. Was it like... Uh, and something about drugs. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, this is a quote from Algis Huxley about frustration. And it's fairly curious. So let's see what you make of this. <clears throat> a belief in hell and the knowledge that every ambition is doomed to frustration at the hands of a skeleton have never prevented the majority of human beings from behaving as though death were no more than an unfounded rumor. So ponder on that, and see you guys next time. is the greatest thing in the world. Except for a nice MLT. What lettuce and tomato sandwich when the mutton is nice and lean and the tomatoes are ripe. They're so perky. I love that.